Hello, everyone. Good morning, and welcome back to the Monday Morning Murder Podcast. I am your host, Faye Fire, aka Aaron, and this is my lovely co host, Mandy, also known as the Gloomy Gussie today. <laughs> Oh, my fridge just started buzzing. So if you guys hear that, um, <laughs> buzz, 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 buzz. I can never buzz. just seamlessly start this. There's always like some, some like the neighbor's dog starts barking, or my husband comes home, or something weird. So, <laughs> but hey, there's not a storm today, so that's the best we can hope for. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? Um, you know, I'm doing. I'm doing. I had the some great downloads this af- this weekend, and uh, even this afternoon actually. So. Things are kind of, I'm getting out of the Monday schedule. Let's yeah, murder it. <laughs> Just in time for the final episode. <laughs> but that's so, okay. We're, we're going to have fun with it. I'm actually like, I'm sad that it's the final episode. Yeah, me too. Um, I am, but you know, I'm not, I actually feel like I want to go back and do season two because now that I've redone <laughs> season one, like, I feel like we need to redo season two. That's That's just me. <laughs> At least well, I want to redo my myself. Well, you know, there's <laughs> there's a lot to analyze, like, in season two. I mean, that's been kind of one fun thing, doing season one after season two, because we have been tying things in, like, throughout, you know, when we find these connections. And, um, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the world's ready for us to cover season two, recover <laughs> season two. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I am. Um, <laughs> so, um, that's my world. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe is that narcissistic or not? We'll see. But anyway, I, let's uh, let's shout out to the chat. Hi, Morgan Spears. Let's do it. What's up, all you citizen detectives, Blood Hive? You know, all our Yellow Jackets enthusiasts. We're glad to have you here this Monday morning. Yeah, thank you guys for being here. Thanks for joining us and tuning into episode ten of season one, which is called Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. Um, and this is, of course, of Yellow Jackets, in case we hadn't shouted that out. But <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is the season one finale, and it definitely doesn't fail to uh, keep keep the, keep the viewers hooked in and coming back for season two. Um, there's a lot to talk about, a lot of tragic moments, and a lot of triumphant moments as well, um, and a party, you know? Got to keep that party buzzing. So, Whiskey Oc, class of 96. <laughs> um, so, man- oh, go ahead. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I was going to Randy. <laughs> Is it Randy well- or Mandy? <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy, do you want to read us the synopsis of the episode? You know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, where did it go? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Old resentments come to a head at the 25th year reunion. And this is where we're going to pay dirt, baby. <laughs> yeah, we get an alley. We get our alley moment and alley uh, revisit. Get to Allie. meet her older counterpart. <laughs> Allie, you okay? You okay? You okay, Allie? <laughs> so um, the title of this episode, Sick Transit Gloria Mundi, is um, a Latin phrase and it it means thus passes the worldly glory which is kind of another way of saying fame is fleeting and um this phrase is used uh actually during the papal coronation ceremony so when they're swearing in a new pope um they would use this phrase um as he was being like through the coronation ceremony from 1409 through 1963 so that's 500 plus years of using this phrase. And so it ha- it is a pretty infamous phrase. It's been used um, in literature and in poetry. Actually, M- Emily Dickinson's first poem was titled Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. Um, and we, if you guys are into it, we can do some book club. We can read through the poem. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was also, and there's been several instances of, of this um phrase being used. There was another uh, book that was written by Robert Hugh Benson. Um, The novel is called Lord of the World, and it uses the phrase in there, but the the novel itself seemed pretty interesting to me, so I kind of wanted to like analyze it with you guys a little bit um, because it's been 
it's been cited as like a um what's how do i want to explain this like there have been multiple popes who interpreted this book as sort of a apocalyptic um prophetic like uh What's the word I'm trying to say, Mandy? <laughs> like a prophetic vision or a prophetic message through yeah. this book. Is that is that the correct wording? Is that what I'm trying to convey? <laughs> um, yeah, like, a, yeah, a prophecy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, we can kind of read, we can maybe kind of go over I that. Read it. Please read it because I, I, you know, I'm about that. And and we've been discussing about how the, oh, hi, Carl Car or Carl Stark. <laughs> Good to have you here, and hi, Wild. Yeah, Majora. thanks for being here, Carl Karsnark. I know I haven't seen you since. Uh, shout out to LML, but I haven't. I don't think I've been in a chat in a long time there, but it's been a while. Well, Carl came to our um, definitely yeah. was at our oh, yeah. stream that night. That was awesome. We I had forgot. a party. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. That's right. That was really cool, actually. I, yeah. I do remember you coming now. Did you get um, your nails done, Mandy? Because they look actually, really good. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. You know, thank you for noticing. I am. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I had some self-love time, which, you know, is very hard sometimes as a mom, but we get it done. And it's weird because I, if you know, I study energy and I'm really into prophecy as well and the prophets and their anointings and things like that. Um, and I'm trying to work with energy with my hands, but now with this fake stuff on there, when I've been meditating and trying to like, you know, access my chi, it's been really hard actually. And I think... It's not as like going as flowing as normal. And I think it's because I'm using fake things at the tips because it's in your fingertips. So it's kind of interesting or in the palm of your hands that it's working that way. Or maybe it's just my head. We'll see. And keep I don't know. I can still access it because I've been practicing for a long time, but it's just a little different than I thought it would be. Yeah. I've never actually worn fake nails ever in my life, <laughs> but I'm no, a little I, like, grubber. Yeah. <laughs> I used all the time back in the day when, when I was a dancer and stuff, I would get them done all the time, but mm -hmm. like, it's been a long time. So I said, you know what? Let me try it. <laughs> Lots of girls like to get it done. You know, but I think the majority of women get it done. So I'm just well, a little scrubby grubby. <laughs> no, we do. It's all right. It's good. <laughs> um, okay. So let's read through this really quick. Let's just read through the Lord of the world. Okay. I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but you know what? We here at Fayfire, we like to do a little book club action. And with this being the season finale, we might as well do a little bit of it. So, um, okay. Lord of the world is a 1907 dystopian science fiction novel by Monsignor. I probably didn't say that right. Uh, Robert Hugh Benson that centers upon the reign of the antichrist and the end of the world. It has been called a prophetic, it has been called prophetic by Pope Francis and Pope Benedict the 16th. Um, so this guy was um, a vicar uh, who began writing Lord of the World two years after his conversion to Catholicism rocked the Church of England in 1903. And okay, so let's get down to the synopsis of well, the synopsis is pretty long, actually, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but we've kind of gotten, we get an idea, right? This, it's a prophetic end of the world type situation, which we've, that's sort of, um, going back to episode one, when Paradise Lost was brought up as like, you know, we kind of decided that was like the first book in book club that were kind of analyzing, which neither one of us have read, but it's definitely something I plan to do during the off season. Um, because I think it's like a good, important piece of literature to read. So I'm going to try and I'm going to try and do it and I'll be ready for season three, or maybe yeah. I'll have something more to say before that. Maybe we'll make a video. So I think, I think book club is, should happen. I think we really need to um, get into the, all these books and just even, even now, if you have read some of the stuff, we, um, rereading it is just another level, especially since you've been exposed to all these theories and things and the symbolism and psychology as well as the spirit realm, because you need all of that combined to really get the full effect of this show. It's not about one thing. It's about, you know, humanity to that life. And then we are only humans by reading these books. 
-hmm. (laughs) Like this is what makes the humankind go forward in all of our evolutionary realms. Indeed. All right. I will read to you guys next the poem by Emily Dickinson. This is her first published poem. And we know, I mean, everybody knows who Emily Dickinson is. I mean, she's pretty infamous. So, okay. Um, And I think I read a note that she like gave this poem to a guy she might have been like in love with. But then like when you read through the actual like context of the poem, it doesn't, it's not romantic in my opinion. So maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but okay. Sick transit Gloria Mundi, how doth the busy bee, dumb vivimus, vivimus, I stay mine enemy. O veni vidi vici, o caput capapai, and o momenta mori, when I am far from thee. Hurrah for Peter Parley, hurrah for Daniel Boone, three cheers, sir, for the gentleman who first observed the moon. Peter put up the sunshine, Patty arranged the stars, tell Luna the, the tea is waiting, and call your brother Mars. Put down the apple, Adam, and come away with me. So shalt thou have a pippin from off my father's tree. I climb the hill of science, I view the landscape o'er, such transcendental prospect I never held before. Unto the legislature, my country bids me go, I'll take my India rubbers in case the wind should blow. During my education, it was announced to me that gravitation stumbling fell from the apple tree. The earth upon an axis was supposed to turn by way of a gymnastic in honor of the sun. It was brave Columbus, a sailing o'er the tide, who notified the nations of where I would reside. Mortality is fatal, gentility is fine, rascality heroic, insolvency sublime. Our fathers being weary, laid down on Bunker Hill, and though though full many a morning, yet they are sleeping still. The trumpet, the trumpet, sir, I shall wake them. In dreams I see them rise, each with a solemn musket, a marching to the skies. A coward will remain, sir, until the fight is done, but an immortal hero will take his hat and run. Goodbye, sir, I am going. My country calleth me. Allow me, sir, at parting, to wipe my weeping eye. In token of our friendship, accept this bonny dune, and when the hand that plucked it hath passed beyond the moon, the memory of my ashes will consolation be. Then farewell, Tuscarora, and farewell, sir, to thee. So that's the poem. Thoughts. (laughs) Wow. Okay, so I haven't read this poem, and I actually, you know, I'm surprised I missed this, and I love that I have just heard this now. And the whole time, I just, all these scenes from this episode were popping up, you know, talking about the political stuff. And obviously, this is in this episode with Thaisa, you know, just seeing the moon when we represent Nat is the moon. There was also a couple um, of the instances. I, I, I don't know. I can't. I should probably bring up the poem. But it really does have a lot into, oh, the Memento Mori. Mm-hmm. That's another episode name. Um There's a lot to it. And yeah, it it is about this turning the tides and turning. Mm -hmm. Almost like a a, where's your homeland? It almost sounds like maybe a wartime poem going away to war. Oh, yeah. Um, But where is your homeland and, you know, the stars? And I don't know. It's really interesting. It it is. And it, it does have this, you know, I romance. Who, who can truly define anything, honestly? Like, and, and that's the thing about like psychology, and that's the thing about these archetypes, and even narcissism. Like, narcissism, there's a spectrum. There's not this is it, this is what you are. That's why it takes it takes all these different realms. It takes your beliefs, and we see a big thing about believing and spirit, believing in God, believing in other things. And then believing in the world. And there's a whole episode in this episode with Thaisa and Van, you know, they are going back and forth talking about these ideas. Evangelist Van is talking about it. Thaisa is bringing out the world and she's denying it and, you know, kind of giving all these excuses about why this behavior could be this or and how the trauma bonds are our worst thing. 
and other people talk about it's the spirit it's the belief it's god it's another thing um and then that's it takes all and that's where carl Jung comes in and he talks about all of this philosophy having this mystical realm because you can say and define people by archetypes but when you define them by one is when you lose the spirit of a human is when you lose humanity when you stop the war this also kind of reminds me of the art of war a little bit this poem because in narcissism is like it's the art of war when you have a thousand small cups you know it's it's the point where you take a war is war you know when the animal side you see in the nature they're coming at you. When the girls turn in season two, they're coming straight forward. You know, you know when to be fight or flight or freeze. Shout out to Jackie. But you win the war by the indirect tactics of war. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much building up, so many tears, these little sheds of tears. But a thousand of them, you know, <laughs> can kill you. Mm -hmm. And it's just some... Um, there's a lot behind the picture. There, you can never just define something like yellow jackets to be a horror. <laughs> you know, to me, it's a it's an existential piece, truly. Um, Definitely. And that's what I really want to like. Well, as we get through the episode, you know, I'm going to be pointing out these different things, but the whole psychology behind these things. You know, look, did you put this up? I didn't even see. What did I put up? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and did I then, click that? Sorry, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> then that memento mori and then remembering also the mentioning adam yeah there's yeah. a lot to it and i love it so much this is such a great writing and re-watching it over and over and over i couldn't help but just see more and more and more and mm -hmm. yeah i got memento some really mori. cool stuff this morning yeah even just getting this ready and yeah i've been a little distracted this week so i didn't get as much homework done for this episode as I would have liked to, but I definitely grabbed a few things right at the end. Um, all right. Well, so should we get into this? You, you know it. All right. Um, let me bring up, let me bring up there, Jackie. Wait, to, we, to go back, we have to honor the past. So there's, you know, a mm -hmm. fight about that, but we're going to, let's start with honoring the past. Okay. You just can't get stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. and blame definitely. So the episode opens um, with that scene of Lottie and Shauna and Mari. And we're gonna how we're going to structure this, I just want to mention this because I actually wanted to talk about Mari for a quick second. And then we're going to get into the um, adults and kind of do the adult stuff, um, their storyline. And then we'll finish up with the Jackie storyline, the fight. Um, so... The episode opens with Lottie and Shauna and Mari, and they're sleeping. They're sleeping outside, and this is after the doom coming, you know, sort of hangover the next morning. Um, so, of course, we know in the doom coming episode, they got up to some crazy antics. And uh, so now they just fell asleep outside. And I do think, like, their positions, how they woke up, was significant. It was, it almost reminded me of, um, like statues, you know, because they have the Greek overtones and everything. So, um, but Lottie was sleeping in front of the, um, she was sleeping in front of the, the stump that she sort of has created into her altar or we see her do that in the future. Um, so she was sleeping there and it was, it kind of reminded me just to kind of tie in some, like a song of ice and fire lore. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of stories within like Game of Thrones and that kind of thing where the people sleep on the weirwood stumps and that gives them these prophetic visions or just sort of like crazy dreams and, and green dreams and that kind of thing. So I, this was sort of reminiscent of that idea where she's sleeping like under the stump, but she's also still like in her sort of Apollo um, prophetic vibe going on yeah and it's also kind of her altar too i want to point out because that brings her power and we see her sacrificing the heart this altar becomes life to the yellow jackets during the winter where the moss is green and growing um and also there's a in the elijah tale with jezebel they're sleeping beneath trees that have um significant power as well or significance in the bible so there's a lot of more to it as well yeah 
and the tree of life. Oh, we didn't even mention the axis mundi. Yeah, totally. Or egg, eggs drill. Yes. Um, and we talk about that before uh, yeah. with the axis of the world and the axis mundi and then that being it. We've talked about it in season two quite often, actually. So, <laughs> And I've talked about it actually in my, in some of my other, I've talked about it in Raised by Wolves videos. Mm -hmm. And I've also talked about it in Amund Targaryen videos. So <laughs> Amund the moon and that moon. Has to do with hand it has to do with the axis it, there's a lot to it mm -hmm. like um, oh, I'm, i shout out to the chat really quick though because this is awesome like we're talking about the magus we're gonna but we're gonna read it again i mean we did read it during season two actually we we charles dance version mm -hmm. on youtube and then this one right here Nietzsche. yeah yeah Nietzsche's i theory. love this i think we have so much of this like and I, I wasn't even aware. Actually, I think, Mandy, you mentioned this, like, yeah. probably during our Greek stream. And I was like, oh, my God, that makes so much sense. Like, it's such a – and I see it everywhere now. Like, now I'm like, oh, my God, this is such a thing. Um, yeah, the Ap Apollonian and Dionysian, like, balance to each other, which mm -hmm. is sort of like underworld versus light. And that kind of really represents a lot of what the symbol – shows you know there's the sort of sun figure in the top i kind of figure like in my interpretation it's it's like a reincarnation symbol um life death and rebirth so yeah yeah and 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 not just that life death rebirth the mysticism realm it puts the two the circle the halo mm -hmm. into the body into the two realms and as long as we have the access it's kind of like you know the revolving of it all and just the combination of it all. And with the hook from the underworld, which we have a lot of Hades in this episode, mm -hmm. we're going to get to that. But um, it, it is that balance of not just yin and yang, but there's more to the aspect when you add in the philo philosophy, you add in all of the reasons. And then even in this, I do want to point out like that whole, I don't, I forget who says it, but you know, the whole thing of the devil like with narcissism or whatever is convincing you he doesn't exist like the biggest trick of the devil the biggest trick is convincing you that these things don't exist mm -hmm. but you know the real trick is that all creation is possible like realms we can't even under underhand and comprehend mm -hmm. so i really believe in like to say you know argue satisfy and drop comments in the chat do whatever like everybody's opinion is welcome we love to discuss all thoughts and theories as crazy as they can be because that's what it's about mm -hmm. um and i entertain them all like the 14th gilly all about it all day Absolutely. so <laughs> like the, what was it gilly's hobby remember that i on reddit there was like uh -huh. that thing. Yeah, we talked about it before. There was like a Reddit post by um, a user, 14 Gilly is Javi. Get oh, this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, but I actually, you know, I have a theory about Gilly that came to me yesterday that I'm going to write. Uh, you're you, you're going to love it, Aaron. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Really stuff now. There has to be something significant about the 14th Gilly. Oh, it's, like, it has to deal with narcissism. Yeah. No. But <laughs> uh, in narcissism, people think that they're demons. People say that they are demonic spirits. And if you have encouraged and if you have actually seen and had experience with them, you do. Many people have abused narcissism, especially like malignant narcissists or the um, there. I didn't believe in spiritual warfare until this came into my life. And now I'm like a living a life, a, a living a life of spiritual warfare and and to fight it. Like, honestly, I'm being called to the guard, but it's, uh, you know, that's my own personal belief, but I gave all these excuses, all these things about psychology, Carl Jung, all this new age thinking, exoteric wisdom, studying. I, I have a well-balanced, um, repertoire of it all. And I think that it all does have the same energy, the same feelings, the same balances that we need to balance. And it's not one or two things, but we are in a two-dimensional world, a three-dimensional world now, but a lot of people in humanity is in this two-dimensional thought process. You're good or you're bad, this and this. And you, when you're in the war, like the war, art of war, it is like that. But when you are indirectly attacking things, which a lot of narcissism about, which this show is showing a lot. And in season two, we finally get the girls directly attacking each other. But right now, there's so much indirect attacking in this episode. And then when it starts to directly attack in the end of the episode, 
with Sean and all these things is when you start to see the axis turning and we mm -hmm. get the sacrifices of not just Gloria, we get the sacrifice of Adam. They actually did a ritual on his body this episode. We see I that Thaisa was sacrificing her dog, <laughs> dog one, dog two. What's the dog's name? I forgot. Biscuit. Yeah. Biscuit. Yeah. The there food. She food. Oh my gosh. It's a food item. Ooh, interesting. Adam's apple food. Interesting. Gloria, yeah. Gilly is a food too because she shuts her out in the mouth. But mm -hmm. she, but you know why Nat does that? Well, she is a fish, but that's also like Jesus symbolism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know why Nat does that too? Is and Nat not walking on water, but it's because the narcissist feeds on you, and she was finally so the fish. <laughs> it only remembers like every thirty seconds, you know, like mm -hmm. finding Dory. Like, what do you remember? The narcissist, <laughs> I don't know, Shauna. I don't know. What do I remember? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, what you don't remember? No, you choose not to remember. They choose she even to rather says that in season two. She says, you know, I like if there's things that I don't remember, then I don't even want to know. And yeah, so this is going to be another video thing. We but talked they about this because in episode one, season one, episode one, Taisa says to her, what did you black mm -hmm. out at state? Yep. I think that there's a thing with Shauna, like not having full comprehension well, of her memories. That's why the books were so important. But mm -hmm. one other thing about the books and the scene with Adam and his body and the ritualism, the way that the four women are posed around, actually, I have it the next photo on the thing um the way the four women are posed around his body is um reminiscent no, of fast. how her books were when she burns her books in season two and she puts them in the the barbecue grill there's for some reason it just stood out in my mind it's like maybe it's because it's like the geometry of the situation or something like that. But it's just the way she positioned them seems very reminiscent of the way that the women stand here. And it's all sort of interwoven because that she was burning Adam's um, ID and like his, you know, whatever his SIM card or whatever it was. Um, and then her books on top of that. And so that's like her memories, her comprehension of things. And, you know, we've talked about, do we think she burned all of her, her diaries? I don't know. That's still up for debate. Um, oh, so, this yeah. is a good, this is a good, I uh, did Ty take Adam's heart. That's an interesting comment. Ooh. I mean, I, I, I thought that was Biscuit's heart, but that's a really good question. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I let's go, go back to it. Keep going back. The, the point of any kind of religion or any kind of thought process is you have to continue and healing your trauma bonds. <gasps> you go back, but you don't let it, you don't blame it. You, you, re, you have to embrace it you have to embrace that wildness you have to embrace your trauma bond but you have to heal it not blame it not accuse it of why you're this way and be stuck you continuously have to go back and change and travel that's why you're born again every day and the nighttime comes that's why we have this this whole thing and then we also have directionals like the north south east west which you apply here um welcome colin this Thank is you a for really coming. Uh, my mind is spinning right now because I never yeah. had considered it not being okay. Biscuit's heart. I, it just never crossed my mind that it could have. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I mean, I really don't think that she would have been able to take it, but I don't know who's to say for sure, because mm -hmm. I think it wasn't it Natalie who went out and buried his. I mean, I just, Park. He's, he's like, go, I take, mean, go, go take it to the hill. And and the and the poem taking it to the hill, mm -hmm. also talking about the winds, the four corner winds, the four horsemen. When I think the girls walked in in the end of the episode into the reunion, I felt like a four horsemen vibe personally. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to match that up. And the winds, you know, the wind is like the spirit. The wind is representative of the Holy Spirit, of the spirit of all mysticism, the cloud misty. So I and I love that. And in the poem as well, they were talking about the wind. Hmm. So it's a beautiful thing. We're going to have to re, re go back to this heart. Yeah. Well, and there's more but heart I, symbolism too going in because Lottie with the bear's heart later in the episode. And mm -hmm. I have a lot of thoughts about that, but I'm going to save it until the end because yeah. I, I something dawned on me in that scene. And but, Misty's um, wearing a heart necklace as well. Mm -hmm. She's wearing a, hot, a, a locked heart necklace. Misty is? Yeah. In, in the episode. And that um, walking into the reunion wearing black and white. Interesting. Yeah. Now they're they're 
their outfits were fantastic. I caught a couple things. So, okay. So let's get through this. So I want to go have, back to one oh, second. Ahead. I want to go back to the point where we were talking about lying about that stuff, because when she's, when you are about Shauna's lying and things like that, like they, they don't want to remember what well, the thing is they do remember. And this is the thing about narcissism and only literally in, in psychology, they have found that people with actual narcissism, like their, their brains are, there's less gray matter. There's a lot more white matter in this processing due to childhood trauma. A lot of times due to what has happened with their parents and things. And what happens is, is that they block out they do forget. They choose to forget. It's the weirdest, bizarre kind of behavior that they really can't quite understand if this is something they that does get trained. Are humans born this way? Because they're not really doing, you know, we're not doing MRIs on brand new babies. We're not doing stuff like that to find. So this is a huge um, kind of monumental thing that's going on in science right now in this development of understanding narcissistic abuse, understanding trauma wounds, trauma bonds, understanding this access between the physical realms and the mental realms. Um, and I found it so interesting because they will say, I don't know. I don't remember. You know, no, I didn't. They'll deny it. They would rather evil, the devil, God creates, devil manipulates, good or bad, evil, whatever, whatever you want to label it as, Okay, just just think of the energies. Think of the spirits of that energy. Um, so I want to be, you know, PC, but I, I do want to speak freely. So please don't, like, come at me. But, like, so the whatever's created, you know, we see not creating new things. The other people manipulate what others create. And then what happens is instead of telling the truth, like Nat, the truth will set you free. They would lie. They will lie and deny because their truth, they don't have an inward truth. They don't accept the truth. They would rather project their truth onto people and that deny completely or lie. And then we see when you hit their truth, they get trigger bond. They get triggered and attack you physically, verbally, whatever it be. If you call out their truth, they'll say, I don't know. And if they don't know what to say in a lie, they will cut the lie and cover it up or they will deny it or say it didn't happen. They'll gaslight you. You know, they'll say, but this actually, this scene specifically is when finally Shauna's telling the truth, but then well, she ends up gaslighting a yeah. little. Yeah, she does because there's, you know, Natalie believes that Adam killed Travis and that's kind of the why that Shauna's per perpetrating, I guess is the right maybe the right word, but, um, yeah, even once they're in there, she's like, well, I, Nat says I need to see, um, his cell phone and see, you know, what he knew. And Sean is like, well, you know, I think you need to come to terms with the fact that Travis did kill himself. Like there's just no two ways about that. And Natalie, she's, her so instincts are right. And that's the problem. Shauna is lying to her and Natalie's instincts are right. But Shauna is saying, don't, don't listen to that little yeah. voice inside of you. Mm -hmm. Shauna's very, it's, uh, I would really, I'm so intrigued by this relationship between Shauna and Nat, because I feel like there's so much more to it. And they're constantly so like, at each other's throats in a sense um besides the fact that it's like the queen you know the future queen and this queen and then like the idea of the queens like you know smothering each other and and that sort of thing but um but the problem is is that like natalie has the pure heart like we've talked about so she's like deserving to be the queen she has empathy she has like she's just more pure um than Shauna who lies and is, you know, is constantly lying really. And so, um, I don't know. It's like, why did, why did Shauna earn the place as the future queen? How did she do that when she's not pure the way that Nat is like pure of heart, you know, or embracing her true self the way that Nat does? Oh, okay. So, this reminds me of the story of King David. This reminds me of the story of the biblical thing, because when they wanted to put the king, nobody believed it could be David. Nobody wanted it to be David. In fact, David wasn't even in the lineup. 
everyone thought it would be other people. Being king or queen, you know, in a prophetic realm, you are chosen by God. You are chosen from higher mystic powers. You are chosen from another level where the world will choose whoever is the most prettiest or they'll choose whoever's, the, you know, politically agenda or they'll choose whoever has power and control. And we see the whole kind of, speaking of the queen, Jackie dies in one episode, but she ends up dancing as the queen in the future. You know, they, we see them training out these things. But, I, you know, I think that here, what it is, is we see Nat failing. She's falling as the queen. She's kind of getting, you know, she's letting, she knows what's in her heart. Her instincts are right. But the voices in our head is what tells us other things. And this is part of what the psychology is. And this is part of our narcissism, too. Because when you are in a traumatic bond with people you or a narcissistic abuse, you freeze, you go back to the past and going back doesn't help in narcissism. Going back, and it's called ruminating. You ruminate on the behavior. You ruminate, not heal. Because there's a lot of times you see when people will, oh, I did this. I cut this narcissist out of my life. I killed him. I got him out. You know, no contact. It will, it, it's a thing. The going no contact makes you think that you beat them, that you got them out of your life, but really their voice is still inside your head. Just how Travis is still inside of Nat's head. And Travis was a narcissist. Like he's a misogynist a little bit, you know, not completely, but he tried to portray his chival chivalistic, but he, you know, was never, nothing was never good enough for Nat's love was never good enough for him. And we see that portrayed throughout. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this. But what happens is, is they stay because you have are so bonded with them. She feels like she's nothing without him. And then, you know, she thinks and hears the voices of Taisa, the voices of Shauna battling, you know, hurting Nat, saying all these things. And right here, Shauna's not projecting her Nat's truth. She's projecting her truth to Nat. Mm -hmm. She's finally telling the truth in a lie projected onto Nat. When Nat, like maybe you were just paranoid and the reality is, is he killed himself because that's what Shauna wants to put down the queen, Nat, to make herself feel better using her own truth as hers, as a falsified truth, mm -hmm. false, you know, falsely saying to make Nat feel this way. And Nat thinking about that, Shauna's voice is in her head. Shauna's like, you know what? This is me being paranoid. This is it, which makes her want to go kill herself, you know, makes her stop. And that's where we find it. And Shauna's here. She's, she, you think she's telling the truth, but she's not, she's, she's telling on herself. She's uh, leaking her truth, not telling her truth mm -hmm. because in, in the scene before, well, why do you guys keep saying it's my boyfriend? Why does everyone keep saying the word murder? I didn't murder him. <laughs> Clearly you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clearly the truth is that. Why, like, they cannot, I'm telling you, narcissists, they have a, in the pathways of their brain, they will, they would rather die than tell the real truth. Yeah. And this is where Nat Natalie, the truth will set you free. She was the queen. But, like, here, now, you know why Shauna's being called the queen? Because she takes the queen, manipulates her by intactic directing and belittling her and putting her down to make Natalie's queen powers her reign her truth her truth is yeah i messed up on whatever but i'm free and i'm gonna take this back and i'm gonna lead this i'm gonna help these girls i know what i gotta do i gotta go back and help these girls because she wants to help people now shauna is taking natalie's power do you well, see this she is and it's in a devious like way and so Indirect. this is Indirect where art. actually if we consider that you know shauna is not pure of heart she's actually pretty dark hearted she's lower vibrational she's operating from like her darker impulses right she always does and let's be real okay we are getting way ahead of ourselves but when we go back to season two episode nine shauna is the one who draws the queen card so really she was chosen to die by the cards, you know, by the, the way of the cards. Now, from what we've seen in season two with Nat and when she chose the card, 
she was, she sort of, out, she outsmarted the situation. She outplayed the wilderness, right? But still, Javi died and took her place. Now, that's just the luck of the draw, I guess, or how things played out. But, like, the same with Shauna. Like, Shauna was the one who was chosen. And Shauna wasn't even the one who outsmarted the situation, right? It was it was Callie inter, interjecting into the situation with the gun. And so this is why I'm starting to lean more and more towards the idea that Callie is, like, she actually showed her strength there. And I don't know if maybe even if the wilderness like took her into consideration and whatever sort of oh. cosmic, like, you know, rule balance of, of whatever. Um, but I, I just am starting to think like Callie, you know, she interjected herself into the game. We might yeah. as well say, you know, she she put her mom on the bench, but also like, but yeah, so the realistic weird. thing is, okay. is that Shauna was chosen. She was the one that was chosen to die. So I think that that's her her impulses, her low vibrations and things catching up to her. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus, yeah. Go, go ahead. So, OK, so the heart thing again, and, and actually this is this was the point of the King David bring up, but I went off tangent. But um, so the hard thing again about King David, King David is a, is also a prophet, a prophetic person. And he was chosen because of his heart. He was given the authority and power because of his heart. Joseph, the crown of money color is sold into slavery, enslaved by his brothers and sisters, his family, David, nobody wanted to pick him because of his family. His family thought that he was the last individual. You know, he was out hidden with the, the, the animals when they were lining up to pick one of the sons, uh, one of between him and his brothers, mm -hmm. you know, um, or no, I think that was Joseph. I mean, but what, anyway, so the point is, is that they claim David to be a king after God's own heart because he had that heart. He knew he had flaws. And one of his flaws was sexual deviancy mm -hmm. with Bashima, um, which we see that here. Shauna has sexual deviancy problems mm -hmm. and Jeff already always knew it. Right. He's like, that was our thing. That was our lie. This was our truth, but she's been living a lie. She's been living Jackie's lie. She, you see her at the end of this episode, Jeff, and they're all watching the TV. They have a perfect house, which is pink and green <laughs> together. <laughs> Their daughter's Jackie. She's playing the role of kind of Jackie. And we see her becoming the queen because she kills Jackie. And this whole sacrificial sacrificial thing the wilderness froze and took Jackie mm -hmm. because she took what wasn't hers. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there was a kind of little payback there. The dirt payback was coming yeah. back to Jackie. And so it's kind of a like the heart is a thing. And when you have this like heart of God to create, not manipulate, not lie, to tell the truth and use the truth as your strength, use your truth as your resilience, use your truth becoming your shield, mm -hmm. the, the armor of truth. You know, the, um, the the belt of truth is actually what it's called is in the armor of God. But it really, it becomes your, your truth becomes your shield. And then when you start to embrace it, it becomes your power from the inside out. This is so Gawain. This is so like the green knight shield and yeah, the mother like of like uh, Mother Mary. And can I go off on it for a second? Of okay. you can. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things that I never get to talk about but you were saying like the shield and like the mother and all of this. So, okay. So Gawain, the green knight. Okay. He, or the Gawain and the green knight, but Gawain is like, a, depending on what story you're reading or interpretation, he's the nephew of Arthur or cousin or whatever. In this particular one, he's basically like going to prove his like knightlyhood, but there's this whole thing with his shield and his shield is painted green, but then on the inside it has um a painting of his mother. And this is like canonical, but it, they do portray it in the movie as well. And to me it's so like like the green is like um 
Okay, basically, they, they like his shield is broken, but like that, he's like keeping close to his heart, and that's his purity and his truth is like the mother protecting him, right? And so when the shield is broken, it's like he loses that connection to his mother. And so there's kind of something to this as well in that realm, um, where the shield of truth is like you know your your maybe your inner monologue, your inner instincts, your purity, your pure heart, right? But then when it's broken, like, what are you without it? Are you, do you still carry that inner strength and that inner, like, you know, your inner voice that is you and your morals and that kind of thing? Or is it just out, you know, out the window without like the protection of mother kind of thing? So I, yes, it's like that. Um, So it's interesting about the shield because in the full armor of God, which I actually have a whole thing with the prophet prophetic because the prof, prof like the whole prophetic thing and saints, we're all saints. We all have the Holy spirit in us. We all have the spirit in us. So, but you don't get those armors until you accept the spirit. When you have the spirit, then you get your sword. And they, and then season two, the girls have their sword, the spirits of the wilderness. They're hunting each other. They have like actual, um, what do I want? What's the word? Weapons weapons right Mm -hmm. the only weapon you have is a sword of the spirit and then prayer so they're praying and helping they're praying but they're praying p-r-e-y or praying praying Mm -hmm. and then the belt soup they're eating the truth belt soup the belt of truth yeah i I put it all together over so but so it's like in ephesians they talk about the belt of truth the sword of the spirit so their spirit of the wilderness is that we need to hunt, we need to pray. But the sword of the Holy Spirit is that, you know, you let the, you got to let them do it. The, the trust, the shield of faith is what it's called. But like faith is, you know, it's not too much of a difference. You know, you have to trust, you have to believe in the shield. If your heart's not in your faith, if you don't give your full heart to God, if you don't give your full heart to what you believe in, you're lukewarm. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a series across. You know, Carl Jung gives his full heart into believing the and his full life into developing psychology as a part of a mystic realm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all of these beliefs, you don't have this whole thing. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. You know, when you do it, the heart, you're looking to be right. You're looking to be righteous. You're able to dissect the heart. People are able to attack it. Think about Nat, right? and, Nat and Travis and them wearing like the magazines and stuff mm-hmm. underneath their clothes to like keep them warm and protected. You see it. I know. So I, I I wrote like a whole little thing about it too, that I'm hoping to make a video for for your channel. Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. There's a lot to it. I like this because they do all sort of have these little like pieces that are significant to them, mm-hmm. which ties into like the Greek mythology stuff, of course, because they all kind of have their own individual, individual like things like, with Shauna and Demeter and like being the corn goddess and her being associated with all the food things and being in the kitchen and cooking and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I like this. I like what you're on to here. Yeah. And the thing is, is like that the brass plate, you know, shields you, fr- shields your organs from the battle. It shields your thing. And the, and the whole thing about it is like, people think that this is not a battle. It's not a battle in the spiritual realm. They think that the spiritual realm doesn't exist. Well, it does. Because let me tell you, manifestation, the whole idea, what you think becomes reality, because it does, because everything starts in your mind. It starts in the spiritual realm. You start to create in this third dimension, in this you know other plane of existence that humanity has, You know the, the conscious, the inner conscious stuff. Everything has an energy with it and it's, it becomes this belt of truth. And when you have that truth in there that you understand it, not only do you know your belief system, but you are able to understand how the enemy is attacking you. Mm -hmm. And we see this between the Hyesa and Van having that kind of thing. We see Mm -hmm. this right here in this episode. She is literally being sold all these these lies by Shauna. It's it's it's, it's Shauna's truth, mm-hmm. but it's not her truth. And so, this is such a perfect scene to ex- like explain this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see like Ju- Julia. She's so good, Julia. She's like uh, her face here because you can see it's like she's 
she she can read all over Shauna that she's feeding her a crock of shit and like but she's sitting there and she's listening and that's one thing about Natalie's character is she's so she's very good at listening to people dig themselves in a hole and she sits there and she puts this face on and she's just like like and she did she did it in um when they were in Ty's car or Shauna's van, whatever vehicle they were in, she does it every now and again where we see her like, or even with Misty, she just listens and she, you can tell she sees right through what they're saying. Yeah. And one other quick thing I wanted to point out in this scene, and I don't know if it was intentional. I really don't think it was, but I think it was such a perfect touch is there's a fly. There's a fly yeah. in the background behind Natalie and the spirit of shit. Yeah, <laughs> the but, uh, above, right up there. Also associated with death and like, um, you know, it's like a bad omen, right? Sometimes they'll be included in in ancient paintings, not ancient, but like a Renaissance and that kind of thing as like a little, um, like there. It's just like a little overtone. I'm not an art person. Yeah, but, you know these <laughs> sometimes symbolic. little symbolism and things. Yeah, it's just like a yeah. So, um. I just thought it was a really good touch because I feel like maybe in other circumstances, they'd be like, crap, there's a fly in the background. But this one, they're literally dealing with a dead body. Um, and Shauna is giving her, you know, just a load of BS. And so it just was kind of perfect that like yeah. her face when she's sitting here, just like, you know, <laughs> like, and and like, on a toilet. Yeah. And on the toilet. Well, exactly. I'm telling you, she's, it's the Bial's above demon spirit. Because I feel like Shauna gives a lot of that stuff too. We have the um, Jezebel spirit, demon mm -hmm. type stuff. If we're talking geometry, she's a monitoring sp spirit. So, and not just this, like the influence of Misty is getting inside of Nat's head too. Mm -hmm. Because, and you see, that's why I think the symbolism of her locked heart is big deal. Because Mon Misty's all monitoring all the time. She's mm -hmm. talking about, did you shut off your phone? Shut off your phones immediately. Mm -hmm. Burn your phones. Do this because she knows that. Because she mm -hmm. monitors them all on their phones. And now Nat not only hears her head, like Missy, I need his phone. I need his phone to know what he did it. I need his phone to do this. I need to go through their phone. When you go through narcissist abuse, you go through their stuff. They monitor you too. You, you start monitoring each other. It's crazy. Cause like I, you know, I'll be the first one to tell you, I never monitored any of my boyfriend's phones, any of the stuff ever. Then I went through this narcissistic abuse and I had this gut feeling stuff was happening. Right. Mm -hmm. My gut. And I was like ignoring it. No, he provides, he does this stuff. You give all these things, you ignore your gut feeling just like that. But you know in your gut what's right. You feel it. And then finally when you open up that world, when I opened up the phone, I found it. Oh, I found it. And I found years of it. And I found years of my life being a lie. Mm -hmm. Everything I thought, all the memories I made, even me getting pregnant, it was a lie apparently. Right? It was, a oh, I didn't mean to. But no, in, in my mind, we did to. We meant to. My baby, like, you know what I mean? It's that my baby was born uh, because I meant to, I wanted to, and I loved it. In my belly was love passing through the baby. But when I read that, my whole storyline changed. My whole life changed. My whole traumatic wounds opened up. And I'm sharing this not to, you know, I kind of am a little bit dumping. But at the same time, I'm doing it in hopes to help you guys see as, a, as another storyline and opposed to this one, that these things happen and they trigger you. And, and, and you end up, these whole things are lies. So when you become, you, and then I became a monitoring spirit myself. I wanted to always be like, He's doing it. I found all this stuff. What is he saying? What is he doing? Like, and then I, I became obsessed. And you see, Nat becomes obsessed. And so she is being told she's obsessed as well by Shauna. Mm -hmm. And then in the end of the episode, she ends up taking all the stuff, thinking she's obsessed and dumping it in the trash. Because Shauna's voice, the spirit of Beals is above, the trash demon, the one that smells like shit, the dong demon, the, the <laughs> one that comes with death and lies. And they come in multiple pairs. Um, this monitoring is so Shauna. Spirit. A monitoring spirit. Yeah, because she's, you know, um, Lottie's got Jezebel. Misty is kind of, I'm well, still figuring it out. But th there is this whole spirit inside her that, and the narcissistic voices of the other narcissists. Misty's clearly a psychopath. Sean is a socio, uh, hidden sociopath, psychopath, dark triad. They get into your head. And then that's when the rumination starts to occur. That's when the rumination comes. And in Jackie and Shauna in the past, when Jackie's ruminating all these voices, well, maybe this is the best I'm going to be. Maybe this is all this fear 
devil gets you by fear. Evil gets you by fear. Once it's in your head, instead of holding the sword of victory, instead of holding and knowing that you're going to have a victory, that I'm going to figure this out, you doubt. You become afraid. And what? And monitoring Misty, you know, not only is she monitoring here, she's manipulating. She's doing stuff. She, she clearly tells you all these things about the phone. And then when, again, back to the point, is that it, it ended up getting inside a gnat where Nat just needed to monitor everything. She was trying to break into bank accounts because the whole time Missy's like leading her into that, the whole buildup. Right. And then yeah. she's like, crazy, you're crazy. You're crazy. And no, I didn't think of that. No, I wasn't thinking like that because you don't realize that people do not think like you, like you learn, it becomes a custom, especially with like narcissism. Like I kind of, you know, you, if you have a good heart, you think that most people are going to have a good heart. You don't even realize that you're fighting a spiritual warfare until you are literally hit by these kinds of evils and people mm -hmm. manipulating and people breaking into your bank accounts and people doing things like that. Well, we can kind of see that too, like in someone like Misty, who sort of <laughs> like they are constantly hating on her and they're like, oh, Misty, this, Misty, that, she's crazy. Oh, what? We brought her here. But really, like Misty she is like a kind hearted person, but she also, she's really like the definition of it because she's smart, mm -hmm. she's intelligent and she's really kind and she looks out for everyone. But on the same note, she's all those things that her skill, her set of skills includes are very dark natured. Um, I don't know, skills. <laughs> well, like, and, and that's kind of how they all are because they're carrying this darkness within them, but trying to like project normalcy and that kind of thing and it's it's difficult it's nearly yeah impossible. well what happened is misty took in the wilderness but using all her skills took them because that was the only time people ever saw her or acknowledged her you know and she became the abused and she became the narcissist like you you have this during trauma abuse you become one their voices becoming your voice they become in your head we see this also with Jackie and Travis. When Travis, when Nat goes in 96 to go, are you okay? What happened? I'm fine. I'm fine. Jackie's voice. I'm fine. I'm fine. And the, when she dies, Shauna's, Shauna's using Jackie's voice. I'm fine. You're fine. Everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. That's Jackie's voice. So we see them, this whole episode, being manipulated by others' voices, not their own, not their authentic voices, not their inner pieces, not their inner truths. Mm -hmm. They're being rejected. And Misty, you're right. This whole thing, it, it's sad with her because she does have a good heart, but you know what's interesting? She wore, she wore this this whole projected in Misty, you're crazy fucking bitch. Misty, you're this as her. It became her shield. It became this is the way I am. And that's the number one thing you don't want to have during trauma abuse, because what happens is, is when you stick and hold on to this, you're sticking yourself into the archetype. You're sticking yourself into that trope instead of realizing that you can be all that and more. And sometimes you can be this. It's like when you have emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. not, I'm not, I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I'm happy. I'm too happy. I'm always happy. I'm always, no, you need to have an equal balance of all and you need to be able to process being happy and sad at the same time. You need to be able to process all of these different elements together as one. And that's the point of the team. You need to be able to have a team work network of balance between wherever the ball flows, you're mm -hmm. able to control it or defend it. You're able to understand the strikes of the opponent and also be able to go on strike yourself. You know, like it's, it's a, Anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll let you get well, away. what's interesting, too, is Misty, she's the one that's um, telling everyone, you know, destroy your your or shut your phones off. And that's kind of implying, like, don't listen to what everyone else is saying. There's like subtlety to that as well. Don't listen to the voices of others. Shut your phone off. Shut shut it off. Destroy his phone. You're like, stop listening to the voices of others. And Misty, she's always constantly operating alone, you know? And so she's learned um, from a young age, from going back to even before the crash, to trust her own instincts, to listen to herself and to follow her instincts. And she doesn't need the voices of others. They don't influence her. 
And so there's something to yeah. that with her, you know, yeah. There is because, well, the thing is though with that is she doesn't hear the spirit. Yeah, totally. She never she, hears the she's wilderness. afraid of the silence, like of that, that mm -hmm. it, because, and we see that when she goes into the water thing in season two, the water well, tank. But um, also though, when she kills Crystal, she silences the wilderness. She silences the voice of reason, the voice of truth in her head. Crystal is her voice of truth. Just how like Nat and, and Lisa, Lisa has that voice of truth. She silenced it and Walter becomes her new voice of truth. Because her thing is, is that yes, you think that she has her own voice, but she's also very loyal to like Lottie. She'll follow, she's very influential. She mm -hmm. forgets her own voice. And that's part of, you know, trauma healing. That's part of the wound. You can think you have it. You can have your own voice back again. You can be in your authentic realm. But then quickly, like Nat right here, mm -hmm. quickly Nat gets influenced. Somebody says one thing. Somebody says something. But it well, is even not Jessica later in the episode, Jessica is trying to, you know, she's like, oh, we're going to write this book or whatever. She makes plans to have Jessica be her voice of her words. And then she, no, she, that was never real. She, she already had that controlled and nipped in the bud, you know, well, as soon as, and she, yeah. But like, okay. So particularly that I want to point out in that scene with her and Jessica, she says, should I call it? She wants to take charge of her story. She says, I think seeing that all these people need my story, they do need, it's important because she wants attention. No one ever gave her attention. So she wants, she saw that, going to the reunion you know she's also one killing jessica to keep her friends because she felt friendship again she felt with the group the group accepted her again mm -hmm. but when going back to this she missed she's like no no i'll take care of it jessica tries to control her narrative mm -hmm. don't let you let me carry that and really yeah it was the whole scene about this when death by fire right Mm -hmm. She's lighting it up, death by fire, but it wasn't like the fire. It was the wind. And this is part of the wind. Mm -hmm. So like this whole thing was Jessica trying to control. And Missy has this constant battle. Is it her voice? Because her voice is amazing. She can do amazing things, but she's being led by others. And mm -hmm. then instead of her understanding and like Julia, I mean, sorry, like Nat, Julia, um, I hope that they do bring her back. Uh, season three. Yeah, we need some haunting scenes of Julia Lewis, yeah. like uh, that. Ass Nat. Yeah, <laughs> haunting. Maybe Sean. Like Shauna needs to just be fully haunted all the time. Like if you're gonna live in this low vibrational realm, then she get haunted. <laughs> you know what? She is fully haunted by her trying to take over Jackie's. The whole reason that she stayed with Jeff in the first place, and I believe, is that she was just she missed Jackie. She yeah. she Jeff was the closest thing to Jackie she had. Totally. And she felt guilty and ashamed. And now she's being haunted by her daughter, <laughs> like mm -hmm. as Jackie. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Before we get back to the um the graduation, just a quick RIP, Jessica Roberts. Mm -hmm. You know, you fucked around and you found out. So <laughs> uh, no shots. There won't be no shots. Interestingly, you know, she had that moment before Misty un unlocked her um handcuffs and stuff she basically like kind of made confession i feel like she was like you know saying basically if you haven't i don't remember what she said but something to the effect of like you don't you know what i do me at all if you haven't if you don't understand like so and so about me anyways you but, know what i do for a living <laughs> yeah and how it's like been so fracturing on her soul basically and so i felt like there was a level of like uh um making confession which is something that happens pretty consistently like with a lot of these characters and um like adam kind of made confession to shauna even jeff kind of makes confession to shauna um travis not travis but um kevin with nat and then jessica with misty and ty i i don't know if we have much of that with her because she's so cut off she's like that's her alter self that's in touch yeah. with that sort of energy so i don't I know have, if she has no spirit she has no spirit realm. that's why she's in the dirt she's not even floating in the air she yeah. has no spirit yeah she's not 
she's in the dirt. She's dead. She's she's dead to God. She's dead to any higher spirit. She's dead to authentic. She's dead to like she doesn't ever take blame because she doesn't want to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. And she that's why she can't see. She's under the dirt. She says why she has no eyes. The only the, the truth will set you free. The blind shall see. And when you when you accept the spirit into your life, then you will be given your eyes will be unshielded. Mm -hmm. And and then you'll start to be given wisdom and you will start to see things. But, um, you know, she's paying the dirt. But also the whole thing about like this confession, another word for that is repent. <laughs> repent. Yeah. And instead of repenting to the spirit and repenting to what they did, which we see them praying and, and thanking, being praising of the spirit to the wilderness with the bear. Mm -hmm. They're not repenting. And that when you repent, it's simply you, you just tell God, you know, I was wrong. I did do this. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be special. It doesn't have to be a whole thing. It's a way of the saints. Mm -hmm. And we're and this is, you know, saints are so tragic, right? That's, are they, Shana? Yeah. But and that's our saints. Not. We're yeah. we're all we're all saints. Mm -hmm. Since the blood since so so supposedly how it goes in the religious realms is that when Jesus died, that you became a saint like him because his blood became your blood and he was a saint. So now we all have it in us to tap it. Should we tap the well mm -hmm. of the spirit, but only can with the spirit, can you accept and become that blood? Can that blood flow? Mm -hmm. And only with him, can you actually get to God and the higher realms? Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the, that's how it goes. If you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so they after basically they get Adam's body situated, they all kind of have their roles, uh, their duties. So um, Misty is going to take the head, which she ends up taking to the the funeral home and sneaking it in with Mrs. De Janeiro. Um, the eyes. Uh, she takes the eyes, right? Not just the head. Not just the head. The eyes. I don't know. Because she's she, like the eyes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, blinding him, putting him in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Nat, she's the one that goes out and buries him. Um, Ty, I don't know what her special role is. I mean, she's kind of limited. You know, she's got she's got to keep her image clean. Um, and then Shauna had to chop him up. And so um, <laughs> that was pretty gruesome. It was funny because I, like, paused it right on that moment where she's, like, cutting – his body and so i turned it on this morning and that was like the very first thing that came up i think i like had shut it off really fast because my kids came out a couple days ago when i was watching it so then when i turned it back on i was like oh that's lovely first thing in the morning but um but anyways so yeah so they chop him up they dispose of his parts they go home and because the the reunion is that night and so they go home and they have um they get themselves cleaned up and dressed and everything. And there is that moment, like, when Ty walks into her house and she sort of, like, starts to cry for, like, a quick second, you know, feeling that emotion um, and letting her guard down for just a quick second. There's nobody in her house, and that's probably equally as upsetting. You know, she goes home and everybody's gone because she is the problem. And so um, – but what I loved about that scene, too, is she has the the light shining right – over her shoulder right behind her. So it's like her goddess symbolism with Hikate and the lanterns. Um, and then Shauna also in the shower, she just starts weeping. They have that, that shot of her just crying in the shower. And I think that's really beautiful. Like um, there's sort of this cleansing happening with the water. That's also part of like the Eleusinian mysteries. And yeah. when they go to their actual reunion party, it's to me, like a, a reenactment of the Eleusinian mysteries is what we're seeing here. And, you know, all these people mm -hmm. gathering together after an extended period of time, they have this sort of trauma bond uh, or, you know, a, a specific reason that they're there um, and why they've gathered. And then you have all these women who have their own like goddess symbolism Mind you, also, their outfits here in this scene are, like, so perfect for their goddess parallels, like, with Misty being sort of Athena, Circe-ish. She's wearing kind of like a doctor's outfit is what it's reminiscent of. Um, and then we have Natalie, and she sort of has this, like, one shoulder, like, um, 
it's kind of like a toga style, um, but also still very wild. It's got like the layers and, and the stripes. And so we have that sort of like the fading, like we do with the, the editing that they do on the show. Um, and then with Ty, she's wearing all black. So it's very like Hecate, you know, um, and her like darker association. And then with Shauna in particular, okay, let's talk about Shauna's dress yeah. that Jeff got for her. Now we know in episode nine, he went out and he got her like that yellow dress and it was very much not her. So he got her another dress and it's purple. And you know what I noticed this morning? Is, is it purple or is it blue? No, it's purple. And I, I, I saw this blue very in- it looks a little bit blue right here, but in it's purple. And that's significant because she is in her goddess position. This is the Eleusinian Mysteries. She is the high priestess. She's wearing her purple robes. Not only that, she has poppies on them. Like it's a poppy print. What is a poppy? Okay. See, I thought of it. It kind of reminds me of like the blue and red that you see in Saints though too. Or like, but yeah, she clearly is the queen in this here. Like, yeah. Well, that's, and so I feel like this dress is really significant, you know, because she's in her role and she's also made a sacrifice. So Mm -hmm. that's re, you know, re, um, like not initiating, but re like engaging with the, the act of, of the mystery. Like, and there's a lot of, excuse me, sorry. Um, there's a lot of. Um, in the Eleusinian Mysteries, freaking fruit fly, um, there's a lot of talk, you know, there's the, the, the march that they go on from Athens to Eleusis. There are, um, the The men couldn't go. What's that? The men didn't go. Jeff couldn't go. Yeah. And, um. Did you take care of it? Tell me how it happened. The less you know, the better. Yeah. They can't tell you. They can't tell you what happened. Mm Mm-hmm. They bathe themselves. They have like a ritual bathing um, in the ocean. Um, they, um, it's, it, people who have already been initiated, they have a sort of um, the very first night of the mysteries before they do the walk. There's a party that is specifically only people who've been initiated in the past are allowed to go to the party and they sort of have like this gathering, this dinner um, and sort of reconnect with each other. Then the next day, everybody, you know, makes the walk to Eleusis and um, there's, there are sacrificial pigs. Everyone is required to bring a pig, which is sacrifice. And we see in this episode, Shauna goes after um, Randy and she says, if you let a word of this slip out, I'll gut you like a pig, <laughs> you know, is exactly yeah. what she says to him. And so there's that symbolism with the pigs, the sacrificial pigs going on there. So we have all the elements. And then, of course, they're drinking. They're drinking these like, um, you know, alcoholic beverages or whatever. Alter- the spirits. Alter- yeah, the spirit. <laughs> and so and that happens at Eleusis. Once they get to the main temple, they drink Kaikion is what it's called, which is a psychedelic beverage, although they don't know the exact ingredients of it or what, you know, ex- the exact, like, um, what the exact recipe was, whether it was based with mushrooms or if it may have been ergot or some other psychedelic um, thing that was going on. But also these people they had were been fasting. Oh. So they were, yeah, they had empty stomachs. So they drink this psychedelic beverage. And of course it hits them even harder. And these people are, you know, like, on Kaikidon. yeah, exactly. They're, and they're right not now. like, the, you know, they don't have, they're not as overly stimulated as we constantly are. So it's a fully, you know, different experience. And then they're inside this temple. They, it's dark in there. They put on sort of this, uh, ritual ceremony, um, with pigs being sacrificed and people like having Music. very emotional experiences. And there's sort of this reenactment of the Demeter and Persephone um, mystery story. So uh, Persephone being abducted by Hades and, and all of that. And then her reincarnation story. So there's a lot to it. They don't know the exact everything that was in the ritual. Um, there's still a lot of things because when uh, Christianity overtook 
Rome, they destroyed the temple. They destroyed the records. Some of those things were preserved, but um, not all of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this a lot in the Greek, um, you know, live stream that we did a few months ago. So if you guys want to see more of that. Yeah. But anyways, tra-la-la. We're having the Eleusinian mysteries. And um, I just. So. They're so cute. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, so her. Remember the two serpents too? Kind of on Misty. She is wearing a heart-shaped lock necklace. It's locked. The heart, which I think is a big symbolism. I love the belt here on uh, Juliet and Nat. That she's going and go, kind of back to the dark side. You see here that she was gold. She's got the gold, right? Mm -hmm. Even her belt is like the two halves. The Apollo, Dionysus, and Sun, Moon repre representation. And it, it's vertical. Like I, I want to point out like with the vertical kind of stuff means you're going up. Like it's vertical her lines in her outfit. Whereas mm -hmm. Thaisa's are horizontal, very flat line, very earth, oh. all black, one color. Mm -hmm. You know, vertical stripes indicate that she's going, she's, she's got yeah, the spirit she's coming back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then Shauna with the V-neck, she's veering into the queen. She's got direct path where it's going. And then Misty's V-neck is opposite. You know, it's kind of like a little bit, well, I mean, not really, but it's, it's not opposite shape, but it kind of, you know, it's being them into where they want to go. Because she's still got light path, but she's being down to the dark. Where I believe, like, Chana's is more representative of her opening up into the queen she's supposed to be. And Misty, she's black and white. And that's yeah. it. And, and, and it's kind of a funny contrast to her name being, like, this sort of mm -hmm. misty, shrouded in, you know, mystery kind of thing. But then she really is just black and white the way she is. Well, and it's – so Misty, there's a – confusion fog fog of confusion which is also actually one of the demons is chaos demon mm -hmm. misty unleashes chaos pandora's box right mm -hmm. once the box is open it can't be closed and we see that with trauma wounds and trauma effects like once you've been abused you can't do it you can't go back there's no reason to go back but um look at also their hair is kind of remembers like they're, they're a little bit mirroring of each other and their hair is down or up like when your hair is down I just want to share a time that I've had Holy Spirit encounters in my prayer life, whatever. It's mm -hmm. wild. You feel possessed in a sense, but you're not possessed. You're just like sharing your body, but demons can possess you. So there's demon possessed or there's like other world possessed. But what, every time they do, let me tell you, my hair is down. <laughs> and I think I've been possessed by both because like I've done some bad things in my past. That's why, women, that's why um, women wear... Um, scarves and that kind of thing on their yeah. hair because it helps to protect you it helps mm -hmm. to um uh protect you from like energies attacking because your hair is very like receptive i guess you might say and well, so your crown. your crown chakra yeah Even yeah you or whatever you wear, want like at. my priestess she wears um uh thing quite often why can't i think of the, the right word but yeah she'll wear like a little bandana thing on her head quite often um especially when she goes out into public because that's when you're more susceptible for like attacks and that kind of thing so. and you are and like you kind of see the girls like their hair is up it's tied up tied mm -hmm. back shauna's is halfway mm -hmm. she's kind of halfway becoming her wild self and the other girls are like you know they're wild Unruly hair is what yeah. Quigley means. And <laughs> Quigley is like a, a English definition or, or in Gaelish means unruly, unruly haired one. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Okay. So Carl Carson. Uh, I love, yes. Yeah, sacred geometry is my thing. I love it. Yeah. The diagram overlap shape is an ancient Christian symbol or fish and form of sacred geometry. It's also the ultimate female shape. Interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, the female pair, you you know, they do also in, in just fashion, since we're talking about it, there are like the pair, there's the inverted triangle, upverted triangle. Yeah, that's what, because they did that in um, Servant. I talked about that because in a uh, dress that Leanne was wearing, she had the, the upside down triangle for that yeah. anyway. But I love here too, like Nat's eyes are black. You can see them. Missy's eyes, you need the vision. Like she needs the glasses for the vision. And look, she's wearing the chain, the gold chain around her neck. It's kind of symbolic of a little bit of a halo type thing. Yeah. 
All right. Very cool. So, um, Moving on. And of course, so there's a <laughs> massive dedication to Jackie and their fallen, um, you know, school <laughs> classes and, you know, the people that basically, all, we all, hey, there's only four of them at the, at the reunion. So like we know Lottie is also in the mix, but like, and then Travis, but so we're still missing, you know, there's a lot of people that died really when you like consider what this reunion actually represents. What were you going to say, Misty or Man Misty? <laughs> Mandy? <laughs> Shut up, Doug, y'all 45 boy of y'all man. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Woo! Shut up, mm -hmm. Doug. But okay, so first off, why is Allie here? Wasn't Allie a freshman? Absolutely. Why is she here? I know. She's like, we need to talk about our shared trauma. Mm -hmm. Taking all of their memories and all the girls are at the table. Like one thing they the girls can actually agree on is like, okay, our trauma. Yeah. But it is true because trauma affects us all differently. And they did have to miss their classmates. But like if they only knew, right? Mm -hmm. And it brings up the whole pact. Like we don't know what happened, but we know this. Mm -hmm. And then this was symbolic of, I also like the fact that Jackie was doing her makeup, right? Jackie kind of poured a little bit of her spirit into, into Allie when she was doing that before they left. Now what happened is this whole scene is about, you know, her work. Jackie is, okay, let me, let me gather my thoughts. Okay. Jackie <laughs> is being literally killed. Like the memory is gone. She's killed. Sean is taking the queen mm -hmm. and literally taking the spot of Jeff. And this is the, this is the important scene is that Jackie did take, or Shauna did take Jackie's spot. Shannon did take her man. He, she did take her life. Mm -hmm. Jackie would, you know, do you think Jackie would have been living that life? The most traumatic, the most, you know, and best you'll ever be was high school. Mm -hmm. That ends up being in Shauna and that ends up being her truth. Shauna is, projecting her truth throughout this whole episode about it and feeling guilty here. And then you see her guilty about Adam, guilty about these things, taking that bath of cleansing, cleansing her mind and soul, cleansing these things. And even here she's feeling, so her truth is finally starting to come out. And then her husband is like, Hey, you know, this was us, this is us. And even like when they go home, they, yeah, <laughs> another deep V. I love that. <laughs> but it was just funny because like word definition dot net that says because I think this was really also a big thing because remember like terrible Netflix <laughs> was when, you know the World Wide Web was out a lot and they it's paying the dirt <laughs> yeah to, like, pay respects to that and it uh, yeah Allie yeah. is great Allie she is so funny and yeah I and of course she has that crazy New Jersey accent, which is so yeah. funny because no one else really has it. Like Nat, younger Nat sort of had a little bit of it, um, but nobody else really got that accent. And so it is kind of funny that she really, yeah, lays into it. And yeah, it is interesting that she's even there because clearly she just wants to be part of the group. You know, she's not even in their same class. And she says she was the class chair or something like that. But that would be for her class, right? Not yeah. for the senior class. It was her excuse to be there to try to yeah. like be part of the team. Like Missy is too, yeah. which you see when they're walking in, she's getting all this attention, mm -hmm. which pro, you know, kind of spikes her to go on to that Jessica moment where we see Missy is ready to tell her story mm -hmm. because Missy's story, that's all she wants the whole time is to tell her story. She wants to be the main character of the page. We also get that quote from Shauna. We're just the sidekicks in your life, Jackie. Well, did I make you be in the in the mm -hmm. past? But it's it, there's something behind it. And then this whole trauma bond that she's holding on to that that she didn't get to be part of the team. Same as Misty. Mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing is, is that Allie is wearing her name tag too. I don't think you really see very many people wearing the name tag. <laughs> Just because, like, everyone's like, who are you? Yeah. Take a picture, right? Take a picture. Come get us. Come get us. And then yeah. all the girls, like, they're like, I'm not wearing a name tag. Yeah. I also well, thought everyone knows who they are. They're yeah. you know, infamous in, in their 
lore another thing, in their school. <laughs> yeah, another thing I noticed is when the girls are walking in, right? Misty's already there, of course, because she's mm-hmm. she's the miss. She's the win. But Shauna and Thaisa have this, they just make fun of people as their bond. They hold their trauma bonds together because, and you realize during their trauma bonds and when Jackie died and when, and, and then their other bonds together, they don't really talk that much unless they're in bed together. <laughs> but like, they don't even talk like about it they make fun of other people they put down other people they're like oh do you P- i'm on the pta i'm doing this oh yeah and just always projecting and even yeah. at the table Thaisa says oh. okay i'm so sick of people telling me here are my thoughts and words you're telling this and yeah. like putting it down for their actual compassion like oh i've been thinking about you but you know there is a point where it becomes fake and nice because or if it's actually real and a true-hearted person will actually mean those things Mm-hmm. People with evil intentions will say things to manipulate you to make you think that. Mm-hmm. And so that's why they think that way. That's why they're putting people down because they have those evil, malicious intentions or they they take everything the wrong way or they project what is inside like Sean is with her lying. Mm-hmm. And then also the, the whole keep them separated was my music shout out this week. Oh, really? Yeah. See, mine was – um... Vienna. Is it, is it Enya or whatever they're playing? Who can say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I just was like vibing with that this morning. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Or like oh, Randy, all that she wants is another baby. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was a good one. Yep. Exactly. And that goes into the Shauna Adam theory. Just saying. Um, I, I, I wish it would. Yeah. Oh, and you know what else was in this episode that that um, ties into that is Misty. She says, "Boy, he sure was a gusher." <laughs> yes, yes. Shauna is pregnant. Shauna is pregnant. Bart and Ashley, if you're watching this, I'm giving you like if you weren't there. I mean, I imagine you were already there, but if you weren't there, like here it is. Okay, you set it up perfectly. <laughs> yeah, um, the whole. To, uh, Nat and Kevin Tan. Are we going to go at the uh, Nat and Kevin Tan thing? Yeah, let, um, we'll do that while we're on this kind of subject. So let's just pull. And then all of the Martinez family in, you know, the re- the reunions bringing up all these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Um, and I love this because she's, you know, remembering she's feeling sad. She's, but she's forgetting. So this, the healing technique is when you hold on to the past, mm-hmm. you have to let it go. You just have to let it go. You have to recognize it, know the tactics and the art of war, but you got to let it go. You can't use it as your shield. You can't keep living with it. You can't go back to the wilderness and think that this is going to happen. This is what has wrong with the false prophets or the, or the whole Jezebel or the whole kind of healing thing. Um, they will make you ruminate. This is a narcissistic ploy. When you go back with your monitoring spirits, you end up ruminating these paths. So like when I w- got through all this stuff that I shared earlier, you know, when I found out all the energy that I was afraid and then I became over my head and I had to go through a lot of, like, honestly, it took about three, four or five months for me to process all that. And my head wasn't right. You get crazy. You get obsessed. You get, you know, all these things because you, it's called, cognitive dis- just like Jackie said you're making me feel crazy yeah that's what it's, it'll do to you Those it's cognitive a disassociation and um where it's like you believed one thing but now you can't trust anything you're literally living in fight or flight or freeze and what happens is is when you go back to the past and there's like um there's in sodom of gomorrah i forget what prophet um uh, they're leaving, right? And God tells them, don't look back. I'm going to be burning the city. Don't look back. And his wife looks back and she turns and freezes into a frozen pillar of salt, a statue. Mm-hmm. It makes you literally freeze. Isn't that like Job? Job yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but or Lot's wife, one of them. Lot, Lot. Yeah, yeah, that's Lot's it. Wife. Yeah. I couldn't think of it. Yes. It's exactly that. And um, you freeze and it's ruminate, ruminating and this whole salty thing. Jackie was salty. She's getting salty. She's mad. She's doing, but she becomes this, like when you go back, when you look back, you do become a statue. And there's a whole ploy in narcissistic abuse with this rumination where they have you frozen and where I was frozen in a bed looking. And, and then even though I found them, you know, I have screenshots and whatever, because if I have to get this divorce process, 
you know, this is ploy for me to do all these things. This is actually a reason, justification for why. When I wish that the whole time he had just told me the truth that he didn't want to be with me and he wanted other people. I would have never have put my whole life in the whole situation. But, you know, I'm just sharing this personal. This is the authentic me. Take it or leave it. But it really hurts. And I find myself still looking back when I get sad and I'm like, I want to stay in this relationship. I have to go back. I have to keep looking. And I'm like, this doesn't matter. This doesn't do anything. When the real truth is, is it's not what he did to me. It's about how, you know, I'm not looking. I have to look and remember that he did this. I did this. This is the real truth. He didn't want to be with me. I don't want to be. A, I need to let it go. I need to move on. And this is what happens in rumination. And when Miss, when Jackie does it, she ends up freezing in the statue. And, and you, you will sit there and frozen in your depression. You don't know what to do. You're so overwhelmed. You're walking on eggshells no matter what you do. Every, you're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. The devil I know is better than the devil I don't know. Mm -hmm. You get in all of this cognitive dissonance and it, it messes with your brain. And that's part of trauma abuse, part of trauma wound healing. Part of, and then everyone's blaming the mother wounds, right? Same as well, the father. Wound. There is a mother oh, wound, and that's like the Shauna. Well, it's a, it's a big thing right now. But to heal your mother wound is to understand that they didn't know any better. The whole forgive them for they don't know what they do, or if they did know what they do, the narcissistic ploy. Oh, they don't know any better. Well, they do. They're just not admitting it, or they don't take. Um, what's the a word? Not authority. They don't take accountability. And the accountability is, is that also, you know, us to a certain level, we allow this stuff to happen because we don't take authority. We don't say this is happening. We want to be nice and say, oh, your thoughts and prayers. When really you are a bitch. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Or yeah. really, this is what happened. You know, it, it's, it's the truth. You don't want to accept the truth is the point. And you want to continue living in a lie. And part of that is also recognizing that, yes, this did affect you. But instead of it being something that it, you have to shield from, it can become your greatest asset. I think me going back to help my narcissistic mother dying, I've never loved her more when I actually started to forgive her and I saw how sad the situation was. And the whole thing is weak and sad. All these years of abuse, I was weak and sad to believe it. She's weak and that is weak and sad in this moment mm -hmm. because she believes these things. And But she, re she was the strength. She was the one that saved them all. Mm -hmm. And her power was there. Reclaim your power reclaim yourself in those things. Don't let your parents wounds. It's a big thing to heal it. It's a big thing to recognize it for the, for humanity, for, for us to grow as people, for us to grow as the human race, the kind to, I believe right now we're all being called into a new Renaissance era personally. And people like Aaron and I, and, and people who are addressing these issues instead of being nice and hiding behind filters are changing the world. But this kind of thought process is that your truth is your truth. And it, even no matter how much you tell your truth, other people will not see it because they only want to see their truth. They're blinded. Mm -hmm. They won't look at your truth as something that makes you unique. Wow, that's interesting how you grew up. I never thought of it that way. They'll damn you or condemn you, which is part of the, which is why I'm not, like I might be a Christian, but I'm not religious, okay? I follow the ways of and the heart of Christ, but I'm not, I don't like the identical Christian, you know, like the things people manipulate and turn things into things that they're not and ways. And they, they put four walls. They're blinded by everyone else. They're blinded by connection. They don't even want to talk to you anymore. And they want to say, you're not doing what I did. You're wrong. You don't fit my doorway. You're wrong. When we, when we all have different doors. Like we have hobbit doors over here, you know, your square doors not fit my round. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand that like their truth is authentically their truth. It doesn't have to fit your truth, but you still need to respect it. You still need to let it be and, and, and learn from it and grow from it and go on to another level together, trying to recognize new things in our existence, trying to make new archetypes for a new, you know, revolutionary moments to create. Yeah. Recognize two emotions. Mm -hmm. So you can become emotionally intelligent because it needs yeah, to come back at the same time. I think that's a good point for Nat, especially because she and Kevin do like run into each other in the hallway. And rather than like, cause they're part, they're departing their departure, whatever from, um, 
a couple episodes ago, he, you know, was in anger and, um, he was like, because she shot his gun and she had been lying to him and, you know, despite, and she said, oh, well, I don't have, you know, I don't have feelings for you, even though she does, she cares for him. And we see that in the last episode because she was like sniffing his pillow and stuff like that. And so she is like carrying this trauma of, um, Travis and just her broken heart over it. And that's one of the things that's like, it is really tragic the way, you know, the relationship between Nat and Travis, like I do have a lot of sympathy for her, um, and for the situation and for her emotional connection to him, because I think there was like a lot of talk also when Juliette Lewis was leaving the show about her being upset that her character was so, um, like just uh, kind of obsessed with Travis um, or with a, a, a guy. And I think that's a huge part of her characterization though, because she is, because it's pure and it was a pure moment in their life. And we see that like in several instances um, throughout season one, you know, when they're out hunting and they're out doing these things in nature together, it is really beautiful and touching that they're having this connection with one another. Um, and so it's like that first love kind of thing. And so I disagree when, when I hear those rumors or it might have even been Juliette Lewis herself saying that, you know, she didn't like how Nat was so kind of connected to Travis and so um, distraught after his death. But I think that it's, it speaks to the importance of their relationship to one I another think- and the balance, the male female balance, um, the hunter yeah. huntress, you know, Orion and Artemis and all of it. Like it really speaks to that. Um, so they- they gave us that though between the seasons and I think that they rewrote it or they, they kind of like, she gave clue, but this is also what I'm, what I'm saying, what we're saying here. She doesn't have to agree. That's fine. But they still valued and, and told everyone her opinion. Mm-hmm. And then now they find an equal balance and it was yeah. great. And I, I, Nat's character is iconic to me. I really hope they bring her back. And, and then we see that again here with those two, there's emotional play where they're, they're okay on each other's emotions. They're actually having an agreeable, yeah. non-toxic relationship. The moment it got toxic is when Nat was lying and Nat took yeah. him for a predator to use him and abuse him instead of, you know, loving and respecting. And, and that's not who she is. You know, she's not a per. She's not, she doesn't treat people like that. That's not her, where her like heart truly lies. And so what she did to Kevin was truly only to find out more about Travis. But, Mm -hmm. um, but it was, do you realize though, she was doing it in a nice way. She was doing it in like, she was, she told him the truth from the get go. mm -hmm. She said what was up. He always knew. Yeah. Yeah, That mean happened though. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think that's why he holds no animosity towards her is because he, he understands like straight up, like the connection between Natalie and Travis, he can't, he can't trump that. Like he can't, nothing's going to surpass that. He understands the trauma that his friend went through and no matter how much he loves her and wants to give her love, you know, he, he's never going to be able to beat what she had with Travis because they just had gone through something so significant together. Okay. So two points. One point is, is that yes, she did tell him that the only point where she started to really hurt him and start attacking him was after she had been attacked all night by Thaisa and Shauna, their voices, their narcissistic demons climb their narcissistic fleas is what they're called in um, where they, they get on to you and they, they bother you or, and then you finally become one with them or the demons. Cause like, I don't know if y'all have seen Denzel Washington in uh, the fallen, I think it's called the fallen is a movie where he, he goes and sees this guy who has a demon possessed in him, shakes his hand. The demon can't get him, but the demon jumps on the guard's hand. And then you can see demons possessing, Jumping in and spears possessing you, not only through your crowns, not only through their, their energy being near you, but by people touching you and things, especially sex. When you have sex or in like intercourse with people in the spirit realm, you're you're soul tying yourself together. You can even in the even in the body realm, when you have physical, you know, togetherness with a human, 
you're swapping like your molecules. You can't, they say that you really can't get that person out of you, even like their germs or their molecules, that some of their DNA and all this stuff, it will be in you for like six to eight months before your body can clear that out. And the spirit realm, it's like six to eight to 20 years, sometimes even more. The generational curses, the DNA defining us. Think about your parents. Like if they have murderers, is it a murderous? Is it is it hereditary? If, and if y'all have seen the movie Hereditary, <laughs> come on, let's talk about some demonic influences jumping through, through your blood. <coughs> Sorry, but I'm getting excited. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, so back to this point with them. We saw that Nat was got like that after being around these people who are narcissistic, who are hard hearted, who are not like her, putting her down, telling her it's not her not getting the answer she wanted to find Travis, right? Mm -hmm. She lied about the situation, but she saw she lied about her weakness. But also here she's going back to telling the truth. And then the other thing, I forgot what the other thing I wanted to say was actually because I went off on the realm with that with the narcissistic fleas. Well, let's move on and um, let's move on to because yeah, okay. <laughs> we still have a lot to cover. So um, <laughs> let's bring up. So I want to talk about Lottie for a little bit. Um, we kind of talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but um, here's a shot of her at, when they all wake up. And I thought it was really significant. She's laying under that the stump, but she's also in like a fetal position. So she's like being reborn as, you know, the wilderness mm. spirit or the wilderness, um, yeah, I don't know, prophet, prophetess. It's, it's also, you know, that when people sleep in the fetal position, it's also a symptom that they've been through trauma, they've been abused. Oh, really? Yes. When people sleep like this, because I, they I were like used to, <laughs> it is, it's a symptom of, of, People of narcissistically abused people when they sleep of, of, of just abused people in general because mm -hmm. they're they have to be afraid they can't sleep if they do get to sleep because a lot of people it's so funny the narcissist will just fall asleep like nothing happened that's why Taisa just falls asleep literally all the time and she can't remember after like fighting I'll be up for days stressed out my whole life's a sham my whole life was a lie I don't know what I'm gonna do what's gonna happen all these fears I can't sleep we're gonna huge fight He'll be sleeping. I'm tired. And then falls asleep instantly. Instantly. Mm -hmm. And it's it's actually a trait. So I didn't know about this stuff until I started researching during Google. I'm like, Google, why does my husband fall asleep in the, after I can't sleep and do all this stuff? And it's actually a trait of, of them. They can just sleep through anything. They can just fall asleep when with stress. People who are stressed and who have actual emotional intelligence don't sleep good. They can't yeah. sleep. So um, they wake up and they go, you know, they're like, uh, <laughs> Shauna's like, does anyone know where Jackie is? And they all kind of start getting into an <laughs> argument with each other um, because Jackie, you know, she's basically standing there like judgmental and she says, I, I don't want to, <laughs> well, it's funny. She says, I don't want to hear a thing that any of you have to say. And then she immediately like starts questioning them. What were you guys doing? Yada, yada, yada. And um, so, yeah, she's just angry and doesn't want to partake with the group. Um, after well, she, they, I guess not angry. She's telling the truth. Like she's calling them out. Well, they, they, I mean, it's, a, it's well, I guess angry, that's, yeah. a, that's that could go both ways because we talked about this like the other girls have bonded over an experience that they had together. They all had the shroom and they realized that at the beginning of the episode, they realized that they drank the shroom stew and that's what had this effect on them. But Jackie was the only one who didn't. And when they were all collectively going through this experience together and bonding with one another, Jackie was on the outskirts of it. And, you know, she um, isolated herself. And when you're in sort of these, like group mentality sort of situations when you other yourself, make yourself, you know, stand out like uh, uh, as the other, then that's when you usually get zeroed in on. And much like with the whole philosophy of like the queen bees and everything, that's when they're going to like, mm -hmm. because the queen bee herself is even in that position where she's like an isolated being, like she's different than the other bees and they all serve under her until they don't. And so, so that's Misty, Misty is there though on the side. Uh, so it, it's funny because I did 
what you exactly what you're saying. I did notice that all the girls are out of the cabin. They're out of the hut. They're out of the house. They're in the wilderness Mm -hmm. setting behind them. Jackie's on behind the house behind her, which is we've referred to as also the tabernacle several times. This mind, the conscious, Carl Young's conscious, the hive. It also has like the breakups of the rooms have the like the hive, not the hive mind, but the conscious realms, um, mystical realms in the room. But Misty is on the side of Jackie. She's still by the house. Mm-hmm. And so when they call, when they're calling it out, and they're what happens is they end up blame shifting each other. Jackie's like, "What were you guys doing?" And they're all, bl- "Well, Jackie, we wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for you. You took something that wasn't didn't belong to you." Like they come at her like a predator. Like she was the predator, but she's like, "Yeah, but doesn't they were all wrong?" But then what happens is Coach Ben. So. During this episode and during even when he tries to break up the fight between Shauna and Jackie, he's tries to be the breakup. He's like, no, guys, this is wrong. Later on in season two, he's like the Magus, the voice of reason. He becomes kind of that person in in the season. But they blame shifted to Missy for the mushrooms. And then she quickly blames shows it. Well, Ben didn't make me fall in love with him. It's Ben's fault. She doesn't want to be again accountable. She, her, her heart's closed and locked since she, Ben wasn't in love with her. Her torsos are useless, right? Where her heart is, her cage. Like That's it's her thing. lock. Yeah, and she's reading the Magus also in this um, in this scene. And, and this is kind of, I think, the first time that we see the book itself. And, you know, we've talked about the Magus in other episodes. But the Magus is basically about... Um, <laughs> this like messed up guy who okay so this kid is like a um he travels to Greece to stay on this island and he's like a teacher an English teacher or writer or something of that nature and anyways he goes and stays on this Greek island with this kind of wealthy benefactor guy who owns the island but he's also gone through like some crazy trauma because he was a soldier and or like even like a commander or something like that his and he when he was in the war he was taken prisoner he was made to do some really crazy awful things that essentially he inflicts upon these other people so um i think they made him act out like yeah horrific things and so now the guy in turn he owns this island he invites people there some of them being actors others just kind of being his victims and he he acts out like these traumatic situations before revealing that it, like he basically like puts people on trial too it's just like a really like a big mind f and um and he but a lot of it is an older influential you know person um manipulating a situation on a younger victim and so we can kind of see that dynamic with coach and with misty and like what you know their romantic like relationship that they had with one another was but um well he he didn't didn't manipulate on her like glaring misty's like glaring at him too while she's reading it because this is resonating for her coach didn't manipulate on her though Okay, so I I don't think I don't believe that. I don't think coach manipulated it on her. I think that she delusionally put it in herself. Well, but, yeah, yeah, but the book is it, Robert's, but mani- Misty manipulates these relationships on other people is what I see it as. Mm-hmm. And remember that also the Magus starts out with a guy in the sex scene just taking predat you know predatory on. The, yeah, like, he's like a, a woman. Whore. Is- and that's the that's what the Jackie does. They reenact basically on him is like why you know his his womanizing tendencies, and then they bring in like this woman that he really cares about, and I think they like she ends up killing herself or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so anyway, so okay, so let's get into this part. So we have Lottie, and they're arguing with each other, and suddenly they hear like a rustling in the bushes, and out comes this massive bear. And they're all like, oh my god, holy crap. And Lottie, she actually, we have this moment between, you know, when they are first waking up. Hold on, let me pull up this shot um, with uh, Shauna, and when they all like first wake up. Which, by the way, I want to actually hold on before we get to the bear. I want to talk about this really quick. Okay. So it's they important. all wake up. 
Shauna finds they're they're all kind of sleeping. Like Lottie's sleeping in that fetal position. Shauna is laying there on her side, but you can kind of like see her pregnant belly. And then she immediately gets up and she finds that the knife is really close to her. But also Mari is laying there. And I've talked about this many times with Mari and her leg. Okay. And she has a lot of like leg symbolism where it looks like she might get her leg cut off. And she also has like a lot of contention with coach and with like his leg and sort of kind of like preying on him a little bit. Like we see it in season two where she sort of like checks him a little bit. Um, And so anyways, when she's laying there, it's just the three of them laying there and Mari has her one, one of her legs like tucked underneath the other leg. So again, it's going back to that like one legged symbolism. And I wanted to um, bring up the fact because I had been doing a lot of research on Morgan Le Fay and Morgan Le Fay has um, her original mythology is related to um, coming from the sea or being like a siren type figure, right? Well, Mari, Mary, Mari, there's a, oh my gosh, perfect. So there is a, a creature in Breton legend, which is called the Mari Morgan. And that's actually kind of intertwined with like that original Morgan Le Fay mythology. Um, so, or it's, or Mary Morgan, which is kind of like a little bit of the Christian influence on it. But um, the Mari Morgans are compared to mermaids or in French sirens, although without fish tails. They lured sailors with their hypnotic voices and sat in the water to comb their hair seductively. And so I just am seeing like a lot of this symbolism with Mari. And I, you know, I always say cal- calamari, which again is tied to the sea, but um, Mar or more more is like a root word for the sea in um I, I i think welsh um or irish or maybe both um so yeah the cliffs of more yeah because they have the more again and the more again is she's mm-hmm. also associated with the sea as well but more again morgan le fay being like the siren her aspect of that anyway so tra la la I think Mari's going to drown. So <laughs> Me too. with the dripping and the marine spirits is also a, a, a demon type energy. I and, also calamari, and the marine spirits are actually like octopus type creatures that like they cover your head and like, you know, get in Misty's head, which is part of what I think probably her and Misty and Aquila become one pairing together because marine spirits will, they, they take that's mind control. They take over your mind. It actually is part of the demonic presence. I can't so. find, I had a link, but also um, there is a Basque goddess named Mari. She's like their main yeah. goddess. Yeah. And her, she's associated with the color red. Um, and I think with like water things also. So it did make me think of like the dripping in the cabin yeah. that she constantly hears. So um, well, also, yes. that's, I think that that's part of the narcissistic abuse too. There's a there's a thing with this demonic energy and narcissism where water stops flowing and the evil spirits, when they leave a person's body, they go and look through dry land and if they can't find it, you know, searching dry places to come back. And the water kind of symbolism of like this, there's a water leak. There's a leak in the spirit realm. Mm-hmm. So there's, yeah, there's a lot to that. Okay. So, okay, let's go back. Now we'll talk about this. Okay. So. They're arguing. They, okay, wait, hold on. This uh, is the best thing right here. The bears. Laura, so Laura Lee sacrificing brought them the food. It's Leonard in the flesh. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love that. Maybe. I love it. Um, I think it was more their actual willingness to engage in sort mm-hmm. of Dionysian festivities, in yeah. my opinion. They're drinking. They're fucking. They're uh, eating mushrooms. They're celebrating. They're hooting and hollering, mm-hmm. getting into the animalistic spirit. That's kind of what I think. But I could be wrong. You know, Laura Lee's death is sort of interwoven in that. And then she does have the one-eyed bear symbolism. It's um, definitely um, not wrong. I don't think it's wrong. I think it's very much symbolic. And I think you're right. That's how I felt too about it originally too. And now I'm starting to see other things, but it's, it's interesting it's, too, it that one eye, like Laura Lee's, she, her Leonard had one eye, 
Lottie has the, the third eye open and then the bear appears to her. And while this bear has two eyes, it's kind of like if there is the Laura Lee interwovenness, then it could be that third eye. Well, I um, took it as like Laura Lee does have like her eye open, but she only sees that is like, God, she only sees that she doesn't see anything else. She becomes, a, uh, there's such a thing as a spiritual narcissist too. So that's how I saw that. But it is something that we should probably look back upon now. And Ty used to having no eyes open because she has no spirit. Yeah. Being blind. And the eyes, you know, she has Sammy down, like that doll of Sammy's that she had the, the taken the eyes out of. Which um, is on her altar. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but the bear comes out of the woods and essentially <laughs> like sacrifices his own, her own self. I, I don't know if it's a male or female bear. I'm presuming a female, but I could be very wrong. Um, but she carries more and dies. Than energy. So that's all. But there is some mythology also um, with um artemis and the bear because she has a sacred bear that's like dedicated to her and the, it was killed and when it was killed there was a plague so let's just read you guys the thing so the cult of artemis at browron which bra brow i think that's a bear word i think brown that's a, bear brown bear what do you see <laughs> b-r-a-u-r-o-n and i think so i think there's like a bear root yeah. word in that but, um, so, um, okay. So this is, this is going to get a little interesting. And of course, it. going back to Natalie being Artemis. Okay. She's the goddess of the wilderness and she's associated with wild things, with wild animals. So it's, she's strongly associated with deer, with, um, hounds and, uh, of course with the bear. So, um, one of the many myths surrounding the cult of Artemis at Brauron originates with the story of Iphigenia. In the story of the Trojan War, as described by Aeschylus, the Greeks had earned the disfavor of Artemis by shooting one of her sacred stags, and thus were unable to put put were unable to put to sea against the Trojans due to disfavorable winds conjured by the goddess. In lines one, uh, in lines fourteen forty six through fourteen sixty eight of Euripides. Iphigenia at Taurus, we find a reference to the original myth. And you, Iphigenia, behind, beside the holy stairs at Brauron, you must hold the keys for the goddess herself, where you will die and be buried. And as a delight for you, they will dedicate the finely woven material of woven cloth, which by chance women having lost their lives in childbirth abandon in their homes. This is also associating Artemis with being a, a goddess of childbirth. Burning the baby I, blanket. I command you to send forth these Greek women from the ground due to their correct intentions. So she's kind of the keeper of these souls of, of um, women who have lost their lives in childbirth. Um, okay. In response, an oracle declares that a human sacrifice is required and Agamemnon orders his daughter, Iphigenia, to come forward for the sacrifice, but under false pretenses. The attendant sees her and she is gagged to prevent her cries from reaching the ears of the gods. In a final act of desperation, she shrugs out of her robes and tries wordless, wordlessly to reach out to the elders, hoping that in their pity, they will release her from her hell. Iphigenia's shedding of her robes is an act done by the bears of Brauronian Artemis, as depicted by vases, which show these bears have having shed their clothes, shed their robes and naked an act, which is significant as the fulfillment of the bears of a bear's career. Iphigenia mm -hmm. makes the original sacrifice and the bears continue the ritual by shedding their saffron robes. We're not done. But like, but Lottie glad Lottie taking saffron robes, ro other robes. No, yep. like taking on Loralee's dress, Loralee's dress becoming one of the sacrificial items they use. Um, and also just all these, all the other symbolism connecting Shauna's birth with the baby blanket, with her not, with her fighting Lottie, not using words, the act of expressing to the gods. This is very powerful. I love this. So let me read you the, yeah, the rest. <laughs> um, but I do think, yeah, the, um, 
Also, the the bear removing their their robes that is part of the like the bear and the maiden fair mm -hmm. mythology as well. And they're and there's and they're skinning the robes. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if you've ever Spencer, Travis and Nat are wearing the bear inside out when they're going to hunt and go on. This is also part of like midsummer. That part of that ritual is like wearing the bear skin, but also, you know, I don't know if you guys are super familiar with like a bear's anatomy, but they have really loose, strong, shaggy skin because they're constantly like fighting with each other. But when you actually skin a bear, their body is freaky, freakishly like human like underneath all of that like when you really mm -hmm. like lay them out it's very human humanoid and it's kind of creepy yeah and then we see like in when they're cutting up the bear shauna wants to eat the blood mm -hmm. it does look like a human yeah it does look very reminiscent mm -hmm. so keep going Okay, so another myth is much more simple according to this myth two athenian men killed a bear sacred to Artemis, who responding by sending a plague that would cease only if the Athenians would consecrate their daughters to her, the bear Artemis, every five years. Artemis was worshipped as the great she-bear and the girls who were required to undergo a period of ritual wilderness before puberty were her images, the Arctoi, and often wore bear masks in rituals. I know. What did we just find? <laughs> I know. It's crazy, right? No, this is not crazy. It's pretty on point. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. Uh, Wild Marjoram asked if I've, I've ever skinned a bear. No, I yeah. actually have not. Um, but my husband is a hunter. And so I get to learn all of these really interesting things. Well, I've already <laughs> skinned this conversation and they brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? into a, a yellow jackets book <laughs> and mm -hmm. pretty much and then uh i saw a bear <laughs> mm -hmm. all the way out there yep so i just think that's really neat <laughs> very interesting, oh, very but, interesting. but there's really you know this needs to be a video like pronto this is well this is great and so what's interesting is like Natalie's not here when this happens because they have that scene with Nat and Travis before this where they're sort of like being emo and and Travis is like I'm going to find Javi and then Nat I think also goes to try and find Javi but they don't go together but then they like meet up later so anyways neither one of them are there so then when we kind of think about the circumstances where Natalie is the huntress but Lottie is the one who killed the bear so she again with Lottie or with Artemis and Apollo and their duality with each other, one being the sun, one being the moon and their brother, their twin brother and sister. And they're, they like to play games. They like to play games. And, and Apollo has done things like this in the past where he's like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the moon. Like he'll take on those, those um, qualities and try and like sort of play games with his sister and be like, I can do this. I can do what you do. Anything you can do, I can do better is their sort of dynamic, their playful dynamic with one another. And so we see this here with Lottie that being the one who actually kills the bear, you know, makes the kill, makes the hunt, um, which granted she didn't actually like go out and hunt. And Jackie has a point when later she says they probably he probably just like smelled us and you know came and found us or whatever. But regardless, Lottie makes the kill and so they have food and um that could be interpreted as something that could be an offense to Artemis with this being her sacred bear. This act of killing the bear could be an offense to her because it wasn't her. It wasn't she as the huntress, her having that authoritative position to say, this is the animal that we're killing to eat kind of thing. Yes. So it might offend her on a, on a symbolic level. And, and that sort of um, creates these circumstances. And then when we have, you know, the sacrifice of Iphigenia or the, um, the consecrating of these girls and their, their ritual wilderness or wildness period of wildness that they must go through. 
that it's all there, you know, and it, it really points to Natalie as the authority of the wilderness for the group, you the know, versus Jackie. And so we see this kind of phasing out of her, especially when Jackie is, she's resistant in acknowledging the bear and what it represents and its gift to them, especially when it comes time to eat and that sort of thing. She's the one that doesn't say thank you. Um, well, but okay. So participate, go ahead. It's not just thank you. Um, so let's talk about that scene next, but um, hello, Danielle, Elizabeth, welcome. We probably are going to go another hour at least. So um, yeah, we're really rambling. So this team, yes, it just sacrifices. And I'm, I'm going to go into the narcissist point about it. We willingly sacrifice ourselves to the narcissist. Narcissistic abused people don't even know we're doing it. We just are in our will. We're in our wilderness. We're in our environment. We're in what we think it is walking freely. And we tend to will willingly sacrifice and they will just, they'll, they'll kill you on command. They'll, they'll sacrifice you quick. And it's also kind of here. We see that the bear just lays down and dies like Jackie. She's like, she lays down and she gets frozen in her rumination, frozen, willing, wanting to think is, you know, Shauna going to come out. I'm just going to be here and I'm going to do it. And, um, what is this? The wilderness favoring Nat. So the thing with this Nat thing too, like, I definitely think that this whole sacrifice or the wilderness getting mad about the sacrifice has something to say because I think that the wilderness is getting vengeance coming back on Jackie, coming to get her during her sleep. I think that it could be also a trade-off for, hey, we started this sacrificial process in the future. Like in this episode, we see the sacrificing of the dog, of Adam, of Jessica Roberts from Misty, all these girls, you know, Starting up the whole trend, starting up the whole kickback of chaos that's about to be unleashed again in the present day. This starts the chaos unleashing in the wilderness. And we see that now in season two, chaos becomes unleashed. But the thing about the bear specifically is when Laura Lee flies off and she does get sacrificed, you know, yes, she is a virgin, but she's not sacrificed at the hands of another. She's sacrificed at her own hands, in a sense. Is that considered a suicide type thing? You know, it, it, it kind of would be. Like, she knew that she had the possibility to die. She didn't care. Was it victorious? Definitely not. But did she go in with the heart of victory? Yes. So there was a good heart there. But this, when Jackie took the sacrifice of Travis, there was no heart. And Travis didn't die. You know, they, that's how the wilderness takes you. That's what narcissists do. They attack your heart. They will sacrifice your heart. They will come at you. Jackie was the predator. She was wrong too, like we said. She was a predator of Travis and took his heart. But Nat is restoring Travis's heart in this episode. That's where they are right now. And this whole thing here where she takes the heart and puts it by the stump, there is some, a lot of symbolism, a lot of connection between that. And I think well, the, the wilderness takes Jackie because the same way it takes Javi. They're trying to cheat the predator and the prey. They're trying to cheat what should have naturally been taken. Travis became the prey. And so that's why they tried to kill him. He became the deer. He became the person that the wild, the wild narcissist who has no control over their emotions, no control over the human, they're animals. They impulsively urge. They're not putting on their human aspects of ritual. There's no rituals. There's no religious spirit. There's no any spirit. They're animals wanting to eat. And this takes about all of our realms of humanity applied. So there's a lot of depth in this, and I I'm really interested to see where or how, if they even unveil it, because the part that's a mystery is like, that's what it's about, is that we live in a mystery. The life, there's, there are no true answers in life. There are no one way or two ways to heal. Your trauma bond will only be healed by you, however it affected you in your certain way. Our trauma bond, yes, we were there together, but how it affected me, you know, I might turn into man. 
and might be isolated and holding on to old memories. I might turn into Shauna and marrying the best thing I see about my lost dead best friend. I might turn into Aisa and not even remember or like not even, you know, like there's different ways. But the point is, is that we have to heal it in ourselves with our own hearts and they're all sacrificing each other's hearts here. And beyond that, they're not looking at their own hearts. So, th but I, I, the whole sacrifice thing with Laura Lee and the bear, like, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that it wasn't, it wasn't good enough for the wilderness? So this is when the wilderness comes into play because it takes Jackie. I really feel. Yeah. I don't, I don't know because Laura Lee's blood wasn't necessarily spilled. Like she blew up. Yeah. And so, um, and that, that was too. over the water also. And so I do think, especially when we get to this scene, and I want – actually, let's go – Wait, like uh, like how Nat says, I'm, I made, I'm, it's not like I made a blood oath. That was yeah. one of the first lines of this in this episode in the adult timeline with Misty. And mm -hmm. then she talks about how killers get caught because they don't clean up properly. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think there's something here because, okay, this scene does actually take place after – Jackie's death. This is actually like the final scene of the episode. And what's interesting here is so she has the bare heart. She's taking it to the the stump or her altar to like um basically give an offering to the wilderness as the bear made an offering of its own life and blood and flesh to them so that they could survive. Um, but what's really interesting that I noticed in this scene, and of course, like we have Lottie with the heart and the heart, of course, being extremely significant in this, but also in this scene. Now I want to show you guys, or I really want you guys to pay attention. So in the earlier scene, when Jackie is coming, you know, she's confronting them after they've woken up and she's like standing on the porch and she's wearing her letterman jacket, but she's also wearing a sweatshirt and it's turquoise and white striped okay and then That's later so yeah vertical stripes and um then later when she yeah. actually when she dies outside she's covering herself with the blue blanket okay so here in this scene where we have lottie dedicating this the bear heart to the altar we also have van in the background and what is she wearing turquoise and white stripes just like what jackie was wearing on her last day and then what's missy wearing a blue blanket and then what's lottie carrying a heart well jackie has her heart necklace that she's constantly wearing that's like a huge you know thing in this yeah. so we have all three of these elements in this scene in this very final scene after jackie's death happened and so it's all like this almost huge ritual where jackie was the sacrifice and now they're paying homage or paying her honor with her symbolic elements they're wearing the robes. They're wearing the the yeah. sacred like garb of Jackie and that kind of thing. And I just I just caught that totally. this morning, but I thought it was super significant. No, totally. I do really think that Jackie is the claim sacrifice upon the wilderness now too after feeling it. And you know, it's up to speculation. But the stripe thing too, vertical, opening up the spirit, opening up the third realm, being mm -hmm. opposed to being instead of being opposed to the spirit like Taisa, like Jackie was. Mm -hmm. being opposed she's vertical horizontal here's the van <laughs> is literally fighting for the spirit with taisa here saying no i there is something else and taisa wants to say yo you believe this 40 spice you believe all these other things no there is something i know what i believe this is it she opens the realm she can she's the other person to help open this realm she's evangelizing mm -hmm. you know evangelist yeah. Which, and, by the way, true detective shout out. What's her name? Yeah. Evangeline. Anyways. But it's also like, um, I want to say giving it back is part of the ritual. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's the same way I'm, you know, I'm bringing up Christian or with God. God puts the spirit in you. The spirit is in you. It's already there. You have to reach up to it. You have to give back to it. You have free will. But it also says, 
if you praise God, like you say, God, may I have this? And then when he does it, you, you give it back to him. Or if he gives you powers like prophecy, they give not when I say give it back, they don't transfer powers. You give them praise. They're praising the wilderness for giving them the things they did. And they say, thank you. And now how can I use this to do this? How can I use this power or this food you give me to make things better? They'll bless you 10 times fold. They'll bless you more. It's literally in the word. And they're giving it back as part of what amplifies power. It, it literally amplifies your power when you praise and give things back to your spirits or your spirit guides or whatever you want to believe. Mm -hmm. Especially your heart and giving the heart is the only way you can do it. You have to go full heartedly. There's no lukewarm. That's making me think of, of the belt that the, what was it? The suit, the belt of truth. Yeah. And evangelists van is always telling the truth. Yeah. You know, and the belt soup, the protein, it's, it's, and the belt of truth is one of the first, um, the, the sword of the spirit is what you first get as mm -hmm. one of your armor. Then the belt of truth. You um, know, it's interesting that like, you know, it is, um, that it's Van and Misty who are there with Lottie and sort of being her like acoly acolytes in a sense, because, um, they are, they have also been in touch like misty has found her her purpose she's found her usefulness in the wilderness that's where she's appreciated that's where you know she is valued where she has skills and the others recognize her for that and so we can see why she would dedicate herself you know to the wilderness or become more connected with that spirit and then van who had multiple near-death experiences um and, you know, came back and then they have that conversation, her and Ty. And, you know, we see that like, she is also more connected to it. She's, she's had this like rebirth experience. And then of course, Lottie as well. She's been rebirthed basically under her altar, under the, the stump of the wilderness. She's having this connection, this mental connection, um, and coming off of her medication to where, to being her most authentic self right out there in the wilderness. So we can see why these three have sort of bonded and are almost the most accepting or inviting of, of the inner wilderness, as I call it. In, the spirit. You know, Let's say the accepting, spirit. Accepting the wilderness into your heart. That's what I always say. Just it's, like it, the spirit. <laughs> the Holy spirit, the wilderness, whatever you want to call it. I think it's the wilderness is a false cool. prophet. <laughs> I think it's the false prophet because like this possession thing is, is also a, like if you, if you accept the demons into your heart, the wrong spirits, they'll possess your whole body. When you have the Holy spirit, you're, you're still aware. You're not, not aware. Mm -hmm. And Lottie's not unaware that she was speaking French. She's like, what just happened? Wait, what, what, what happened? What, what am I saying? After she gets crazy and then gets hit in the head, which is another prophet thing. Not only do you get hit in the head, a, a scar or, or a mark on your head, but then Laura Lee hits her in the head and mm -hmm. like it, the demon leaves her. But like, I don't know. I see that as demon, demonic possession personally, mm -hmm. but there is something in there like, yeah. Or who, who, he means who, who is it? Who is it? Right. So, uh, or how do you pronounce it? Key. Key? Yeah, it's the key. The key. <laughs> Who's the key? Oh, Actually, yeah. E -E -Y, the key to the door. The key to the doorways. What doorway is yours? How many doorways do you have open in your life? Yeah. But um, yeah, this scene is great. It's interesting to consider like with Lottie being that sort of Apollo figure and sort of like the prophet and the kind of light um, that or the sun, as we, well, you know, see it with the, the, her heliotrope followers, that she is also the one who accepts the wilderness that, you know, she's really like the leader of their sort of, um, of, of the wilderness, you know, whatever, being the wilderness prophet in a sense. But so her light aspect as Apollo versus this like Dionysian underworld, um, death and rebirth, reincarnation sort of energy it's just funny that it she encompasses all of those things and then we like contemplate that yeah apollonian versus dionysian um dichotomy and so i don't know she like yeah. 
encompasses the whole inner battle. And that's sort of like her her mental battle versus her spiritual battle, in a sense. Like she's embodying so, all of those things. So 100 percent I like that is what Nat is going through. And then in season two, Nat is growing through. Nat's going through that now. She's growing through it in season two. Lottie, she takes over this this uh Laura Lee presence, right? But the opposite. Instead of God, narcissistic religious spirit, she makes the wilderness the only hope. Whereas Nat takes it all. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You can't just, and Carl Jung and all the things I'm saying, it's not good or bad, moon or night, sun or, not, sun or moon. It's a revolving circle that you have to work with and you have to use human nature, human development, words, processing, understanding, growth, you know, all of the things we have, you can't just define it by one thing. You can't just be, this is the wilderness. I'm the light. This is the way. There's only one person who has the light in the way, <laughs> in, in my mind. But like, you know, there's there's a lot of dynamics between these things. Mm -hmm. And you have to recognize that it's the spirits of the moon and the sun. It's the spiritual realm, not just moon and sun, not just this way or that way. You have to know your art of war. You have to know what the enemy does, but also like understand it and also realize that the enemy is doing the same thing to you. Because a part of the art more was written like the enemy doesn't know all these tactics, but when they do, you know, that's a real war. And it's understanding that there's a spiritual realm beyond that. Do we have to have war though? Can't, why can't it just be peace? Realizing you're in the war is part of the part of the growth. Absolutely. But, um, I do. Okay. So we, let's just get into talk about, the Well, I just want to talk about the girls eating though. Yeah. Let's do this. It's so funny. Cause Misty over here, again, monitoring spirit, Misty calling out Jackie blame shifting all of the attention because all during the meal prep, everybody's Misty. You're a crazy F and B Missy. No, we don't trust you. Get away from us. Missy. You're the reason that all this stuff happened. It wasn't Jackie anymore. It was Misty's fault, right? No one wants to take fault of their actions. They want to blame it on these things. And this is what I don't like because a lot of people are like, oh, I was drunk. I didn't know I was doing. Nah, you just had the spirit to do things that you knew and wanted to do. You just are not taking acceptability. It just is it something that opens the realms of the spirits when you're drunk. Because it's Yeah, spirit. question for the chat. Like, is it, was, who's at fault for the mushrooms? Like, do we think Misty, like, personally... I don't, I don't necessarily hold Misty accountable for the mushroom situation. She's a scapegoat. She had the mushrooms, but it was Mari who put them in the stew, and she didn't ask Misty first. Granted, Misty probably should have had fessed up to it, but also, like, you know, yeah. they were hungry, and the stew was already made, so why not? They're having a party, like... <laughs> Well, I don't know. Do you think that Misty, like, where's, what's the spectrum? Like, are is Misty at fault? Is Mari at fault? Is it somewhere in the middle? It Does it really matter? Just tell me your thoughts in the chat. <laughs> My thought is, is no one's at fault. It's a spectrum. I understand that. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's exactly. mine. I don't think that's what we need to, we need to realize. That's what we need to do to heal traumatic boon or wounds, not boons. Daniel Boone's tra trauma Boone. She's the new Daniel Boone. Oh my gosh, it should be a character. Anyway, um, so they, you know, Missy comes here and Missy's feeling all that blame. She's trying to find anything and anything to point out. And she points out Jackie. And then Jackie again comes at it like the truth. She's like, oh no, mm -hmm. here we go. I'm going to point it out. And, and she points out the obvious. And not only did she point it out, just how Jackie gave Shauna the chance to open up inside the closet. Mm -hmm. she, she, you realize Shauna was blocking the doorway. Jackie was yeah. inside. Shauna did not open her doors. She mm -hmm. always blocks Jackie's doorway. She's always demonically possessed. Their doorways are wide open. Can't shut it. They won't let you close your door. Whatever. But she's not letting the truth out. She gave her plenty of options, plenty of times to say, hey, you know, what's going on? Tell me the truth. Tell me this. But not when she asked her, what were you doing? What were you going to do to Travis? Mm -hmm. 
And then, oh, she says, I, oh, I don't know. Here's this, I don't know again. She doesn't want to accept the truth. She wants to lie about it. Pretend like she forgot about it. Pretend mm -hmm. that it didn't happen or it was someone else's fault. And instead of going there, she goes off. She's narcissist. It's called a narcissistic wound. When mm -hmm. you hit that wound, when you hit that bomb is when they attack, they will flip. The psychopath comes out. And I'm telling you, when you see these things and when you experience it, they won't say anything. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then you're like, what the hell? You're driving me crazy. What are you saying? No, you were there. Jackie lost her time. She's like, no, I want you to admit it. Say something. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you were going to do. Say it out loud. Calling her to back to have accountability. Jackie gets up. I mean, not Jackie. Shauna gets up and starts attacking and attacking verbally, which I'm sorry, verbal words to me are worse than if you were to stab me. Because verbal words, those wounds heal. Verbal words stay in your mind, like the voices and all of these other hands that we've been talking about this whole thing. The voices in that's head where it makes you want to kill yourself. These verbal words, when you hurt people's spirits, people kill themselves over things said like this. And I'm getting very emotional because I'm going to try to calm it down because this is a real thing spiritual warfare they attack your spirit and your heart your spirit of worth your spirit of loneliness your spirit of am i wrong your fear all these things were brought out in jackie by all of shauna's words mm -hmm. words that she knew would kill jackie mm -hmm. shauna murdered jackie in this scene as far as i'm concerned that's my truth I think that Jackie, I mean, I think Shauna feels that way in the morning too, when it comes down, when she actually finds Jackie, I, that was what I was thinking this morning too. I was like, I think inside Shauna feels like she murdered Jackie because it yeah. had, she swallowed her pride and like, yeah, the words matter. And whether it was her silence or her words, like Shauna couldn't give any kindness. And so there, yeah, there's it. And I totally get it too. Like, you know, because these, like, I've been in this kind of situation under narcissistic abuse by a bitch before. And it was a similar exact thing where it's like, there's silence until they cut you so deep that they, they live, leave you out of the cold. That's literally what she did to me. It was, you're not in the house anymore. And get out of my <laughs> house. Matter. Yeah, get out of the house, kind of thing, and it's like, what? You either you leave or I leave, kind of thing, and so yeah. you know, it's really cruel what happened here, especially. And you know, we have the group also who sits here and they just watch. You know, they watch the whole situation go down. Well, they stay out of it, Coach, which because which, they're all narcissistically tied together because they they knew that they did it together and well, the only yeah. people who weren't there they were all guilty but and that's still not on there that note, that's so, still not there because even when ty tried to stand up for jackie and try to kind of like have her back so that it wasn't all just against jackie um even then jackie like told Ty to frig off. She was just like, you know, don't act like this isn't what you wanted the whole time. And I think she means that in Shauna and Thaisa's friendship and those two bonding and becoming so close with one another um, mm -hmm. that she's like, well, you know, Jackie probably feels like she just wants like Ty wants Jackie cut out of the picture so they can be best friends and be just as awful with one another. Because I think that Jackie recognizes that yeah. Ty has some incredibly toxic tendencies, whether it be from, you know, the whole alley situation, because that was all like going behind Jackie's back. Oh, Jackie's not going to be happy about this. And, you know, trying to sort of take the lead. And so Jackie probably always feels like that about Thaisa. Like she's sort of mm -hmm. trying to undercut her or something like that. Well, what they do is they manipulate the narrative or they feel like that situation where it was literally sabotage triangulating in, in more of a triangle, but like that situation with Allie originally, like it's, they they get behind you and they gossip it's gossip it's slander it's devaluing jackie's character devaluing the captain behind her back to gain support just like taisa does politically in her life that becomes her lifestyle is she is 
gossiping, slandering, finding out people's weaknesses and going for it so much. This is what a narcissist do does. They are legitimate predators where they physically harm and hurt people to control what they want and need. And and then Thaisa coming in, it's not even, it's, it's because she wanted to also not agree with the spirit because she didn't agree with the praying either. She belittled and kind of said stuff when they said, let's pray about it. Let's be thankful for this food we're about to receive. Mm hmm and it's, and it's very, like, you can see all these narcissistic ploys in this. You can see all this energy. and But I'm telling you, the words sting the worst. Like, I, you know, I, I, I'll just say it. My mother, biggest narcissistic person I've ever found. But she was overt. She was clearly. There's no denying it. She was mean. She was evil. She beat the hell out of me and my brothers and sisters. We were in foster care growing up our lives. She beat the I've seen her stab my stepfather. Okay, let me tell you a real story. Me and my brothers and sisters in the closet. I was seven years old. Hiding them and watching her stab my stepfather in the, the chest, in his heart, near his heart. He survived. They toxic stuff had to fall apart, had to get a divorce. She said the most terrible things to him. He hung himself because of the words said. After all of that pain, anger, after all of those things that they did fighting war, real warfare, what killed him were her words of telling him he was worthless. He'll never have better than her. Just like this scene right here. Jackie, you'll never be better than high school. You'll never have this. All of these things that she was opening to Shauna to try to get Shauna to tell her the truth. Right? And then in the last episode, she throws back at her and Shauna not telling the truth. And you know what she gets mad about? I read him. Whose baby is that? Right? And you see Shauna about to tell because you slept, but she stops because she can't even say that because she knows she can't even speak those words because it's the real truth. This is a narcissist right here. They will not tell the truth. They will stop in mid sentence. They will say, I don't know. I can't remember. They will do these things. And then Oh, you read my diaries? You saw my truth because Shauna writes the real truth in her diaries because she can't tell the truth. She can't speak the truth. So she writes it in her private journals. Maybe so she can remember. We'll see. Right? But yeah. the point here is all of these things, you see it in her coming at Jackie so hard like that. So much where Jackie's like, what the heck? And then Jackie's saying, hey, well, Nobody asked you to live in my shadow. I thought we were friends because she was a good friend. Jackie was a good friend. I thought so. I mean, yeah, she was a little controlling the way her mother taught her to be. And mother wounds there for sure. Which Shauna even takes on Jackie's mother wound. <laughs> Shauna goes on Jackie's mom's house every year. Mm -hmm. Literally, uh, completely absorbing, cannibalizing Jackie's spirit, cannibalizing her voice. Even when Jackie yeah. dies, even when Jackie dies, Shauna says, come on, I was the best friend. It's fine. It's fine. That's not Shauna's voice. That's Jackie's voice. Mm -hmm. That's all I guess. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> These words are real. Words are, words are what makes a human a human. Words are our blessing. Having communication, being able to be vocal. Any other creature on the planet is not able to talk and use words the way we are communicate right yeah but you know in the bible even like the things that 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 was our blessing is that man we were able to name all the other creatures on the planet right we were able to name these things we're able to name these types of energy oh, spirits and whatever we're able to name but again you know god does also in the tower of babylon he makes it so that you can so that we're mixed up so there, there's catch 22 on that one, but it's just words are really man's power. And this is what kills you. So M while Marjoram asked, why didn't Nat and Travis see Jackie outside? And that's a really good question. Um, there's actually, and I, again, going back to, I've told you guys this, that my son flushed my SD card down the drain a few weeks ago. So I lost a lot of stuff. Sabotage. Yeah, I know. But um, there is, I and I had a copy of it, but unfortunately I don't anymore. But there is a cut scene 
where oh, yeah, this is cool. That where Nat and Travis come back to the cabin while Jackie's outside and she's like trying to light the fire and all this. And Nat gives her like, I don't know if she actually says anything. I can't recall if she actually says anything to her, but she gives her like this just evil glare, evil like look or whatever. And so they do, they encounter each other when in that moment, but I'm, I'm sad that they cut that because I think it would have been a good thing, especially seeing like Nat and Travis coming back together while, um, while Jackie would be the one that's out there on her own. So also like the whole Nat, all these scenes we get with Nat being like this voice of truth for all these characters and in season two, as well as here with Shauna, like that would have been a great scene. I also, wait, I also like this. Jackie couldn't go back inside because she wasn't the queen and she wasn't the alpha. She would have, she would have been, you know, more the beta and become more servitant. And yeah, that's- she, and I think that you're, there's other comment. Um, well, ja- okay. So on this ja- couldn't live without being queen B and yeah. I agree. Like she, and she's like, she said, she's the only one out there that's not getting off on the back to the land BS. And, um, what is Jackie's gossip? Because honestly, I don't think Jackie kept it quiet. Jackie's silence is part of what killed her. She no, didn't say because, it. She gave- well, she blabbed to Travis oh, well, yeah. about like Nat's business. And so then if Nat oh, yeah, is sorry, the, the queen, the wilderness queen, then, you know, mm-hmm. really she's like leaking this. She's not being loyal to the queen. And she's not recognizing that someone else could be the queen, I think. Or that, yeah. she, you know, even when she's not thriving in her environment, that she couldn't like look to someone else for authority she just yeah. ultimately believes that she's the only one who has that influence in well sense. i think but that's like the first time she starts gossiping because after she found out the truth and was she was hurt by the narcissist she was hurt she took on shauna's narcissistic fleas and then she wants to go and do what shauna did to her and that's part of narcissism is they want to go do what everybody else did or they think they have right to treat a person bad because they've been treated bad. Or like people with, with mother wounds and traumatic wounds, they think that that's an excuse for them to act the way they are. No, your behavior is wrong. Be accountable. Change it. If your behavior is hurtful to another human being, whether it be by words, whether it be by, by physical harm, whatever it is, realize it. And do not be hurtful. Be fruitful. You know, like work out. Except for unless you're sleeping with another person's man. I don't know about that, but but yeah, Hello. that was like, the thing. Is though Jackie doesn't gossip about Shauna's secrets. You not know, so there's Shana. something to be said about that. Well, she does actually because she's the one who exposes her because she gets driven to the point because Shauna now, won't admit her own stuff. So she does. Yeah, but that's yeah. not gossip because gossip is behind your back. True. That's straightforward. No, tell the truth. Now you have no other choice. Now I'm holding you accountable in front of everyone because you're trying to come at me I'm in front of everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, and honestly, I Jackie, I thought, handled it pretty well because I would have gone up to China, what the hell, like, in front of everyone and exposed her probably the mm-hmm. same way Jackie did to her. But, like, Jackie should have done that from the get-go and said her silence is what killed her. Her silence expecting Shauna to be a truthful, telling friend because that's how Jackie is. She's like, I'll tell my friend everything. We tell each other everything. But then, you know, what kills me is that in the future, Shauna and Taisa do tell each other everything. Yeah, but that's because they're that's because they're both an interesting thing. Why it's like, is it jealousy that causes this rift or like causes Shauna to not be able to be honest? Or is it more like her, you know, like she believes that she's put Jackie on sort of a pedestal to where she thinks that Jackie can do no wrong or that she's almost like a higher being to where she look, you know, she's looking down upon everyone else sort of thing. And that's kind of the idea that I have for Shauna as to why she would continuously lie, but then also sort of peck away at her and try and take what's hers. And, um, but still ultimately not be able to be honest about that. It's almost like, yeah, she did look to her as the queen because Mm -hmm. you can't criticize the queen. Like no matter, even if she asks you to, you can't, and that's like a thing with, you know, 
that's almost a trope in a sense to where yeah, yeah it is it is don't feel like they they just have like um yes men around them who are constantly telling them what they want to hear or oh you are this wonderful great person mm -hmm. whereas uh, they might be at the point where they want to hear that that criticism they want to Austin hear prayers. What, do you, what, what does everyone else actually think about me and that's you know pe your regular person is not going to be able to be that honest and upfront with a royal figure. And so I kind of feel like that's what Shauna has done with Jackie, where she ultimately does really view her in that queenly position. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but like, so I love that you said that. That's so true. It's also like part of uh, House of Dragon, you know, where with Otto Hightower, <laughs> like, mm -hmm it out where they're but like that's the thing is people don't think that when you're given authority or realms to be queen you don't have to suck they like they're not better they just are able to listen more and that's when you stop listening to the people around you people want to honor her put on her pedestal Thaisa is on a pedestal in the future you know and that's and she's given her all this stuff probably for a more because like Shauna don't have anyone else to go to but this whole pedestal thing, you know, that's lies. It's lies thinking that you can't tell a person or a political person what we need to change. This is what we're supposed to do. And it's that whole thoughts and prayers, a little right. bit of a continuous real right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, be real, use your authentic voice, tell them that things aren't working this way. Let's be better. But no, people would rather, like if you, for example, for example, you know, Joe Biden. Biden. No, <laughs> no, yeah, no, but really, like, for okay, for example, my PTO, they, they we always do it this way. Well, it's the most not flowing, block door blocking, no airway going, flowing thing. They like we put the tables like this. Well, you can't walk around it. You have to put flow. Let me change it. I've been doing party planning for twenty years. I put the parties. I do it. I walk out the room for a minute. They move the tables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to come back the way it always has been i'm like okay so never mind my 20 years of doing event planning for for actually obama donald trump i've done for bill clinton met them all because of the events i did for these high-ranking people but at a little elementary school you know better than me right you're gonna do it but i said okay fine I'll, let's leave it that way but it's like people will block you like blockers you know and then this situation is like Shauna, yeah, she's getting mad and that's what she wants to hear. But no, the the real the real truth is, is that this is another excuse for Shauna not taking accountability and talking her truth. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that's that's what psycho, like psychology is. That's what yeah. narcissism labels are. And when you said the whole trope thing, it does become a trope. It well, becomes it, a whole it, label, mm -hmm. but you're not one label. People are not one label. We have dynamics beyond. People don't understand why we do all this lying, but this whole narcissism ab abuse thing, which is just as popular as a trauma wound, mother wound abuse. So let's let's examine and let's bring in both ploys into our examination. Let's be aware of both ends. Let's be aware of the Greek mythology. Let's be aware of the biblical mythology, let's, which they oppose each other a lot of times. But anyway, you know, money, gods, one God, whatever. Let's be aware of it all and let's grow and learn from it all. Yeah. And what's happening here? Is Shauna's door is shut? Shauna's path is blocked. All these excuses, but like Jackie's is straightforward. Hey, you hurt me. Now I'm going to go freeze to death. Mm -hmm. And when I do think that it is, I think it is part of what happened. Jackie took what wasn't hers. It wasn't her. That wasn't her voice. That wasn't her thing. Maybe it was her voice they're talking about. Jackie took what wasn't hers. She started acting like Shauna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree. Or she, it doesn't even have to be about a man. Triumphantly, oh. because Shauna is so like blockaded that she's impenetrable. But um, but yeah, she. I she like this tried. comment. What? I like this comment. Jackie's authentic in a civilized world way, and she is. Yeah. She but was she also queen, like queen bee in the in society back in their normal lives out in the wilderness. She's not thriving. She's failing triumphantly and she knows it and that's the problem but she's not really willing to give up the reins as like the leader and maybe it's just the the situation they're in maybe she's so used to being the leader um she's served that's because people are serving her not telling the truth her mother shauna i'm sorry to interrupt but like i i just it it just is i'm so passionate right now about yeah. it <laughs> But she, so yeah, so 
I don't know. It's it's a tough situation, and the the way that it all played out is definitely interesting to say the least. Um, but so she decides to go outside. She's gonna. She basically they're fighting with each other, and Jackie tries to make Shauna leave, and Shauna says, "I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go." And most of the people in the room basically have her back. Nobody's going up against Shauna, and I think that's what Jackie was presuming was going to happen. Was everyone was gonna be like. Oh my God, Shauna. But the fact of the matter is, is that Jackie went and did the exact same thing just the night before and went and took Nat's boyfriend, slept with him, created a whole scene and everybody knew about it. And so how are they supposed to be sympathetic to like one side or the other? Really, both of them have done equal bad things. And in the true like nature of their situation, Natalie is naturally evolving to become their queen because she is the one who feeds the group. So, and this is sort of a, an interesting dichotomy that they face because, you know, Jackie has been their leader since they were back in society. She's sort of that pretty popular girl. So one might assume that she should be the leader, but then we also have even the um, addition of Lottie as sort of their spiritual guide mm -hmm. who's giving, you know, that some of the girls are looking to, to be their sort of leader. And then versus Natalie, who's kind of their physical leader by being the huntress and by being the person who's willing to go and hunt and kill to feed the group, to keep them all alive. And truly in essence, at the end of the day, in my opinion, Natalie is for sure the most important person in the group because she is the one who is willing to go and be the huntress. And she just, you know, no questions asked, took that position on. Um, and so she's the one that is looking after the group in the most essential way. Whereas Jackie can't even get up early in the morning. You know, she can't even partake in these things. She doesn't want to be butchering the animals. She doesn't have any specific duties except for go get water because that's all you're good for, you know? And so. Which um, is symbolically kind of. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, which is, you know, is definitely a useful, you know, obviously they all need water, but it's like, is that, well, is that your only skill that you're bringing to the table, then you're not proving to be a very useful person out there. And Jackie knows that. And she's not trying to be. That's why she's given up. That's why she's nihilistic. That's why she's not eating all of those things. She's very depressed. She's feeling the loss of her power. And, um, and so she just kind of gives up, especially after her best friend betrays her. The only source of like real comfort and um, familiarity that she should have out there betrays her in her most vulnerable time. And so I, you know, I can understand where Jackie's coming from and her like, you know, her lack of motivation, her, her sadness overtaking her, especially when rather than um, Shauna having a sympathetic reaction or having anybody at all have her back, it was the complete opposite. And, and Shauna attacked her as well. Yeah. And so and I don't, I can understand where Jackie was at, where she was finally just like, forget mm -hmm. all of this. I'm going outside. And little did she, she know it was absolutely to her detriment, but um but <laughs> well, yeah, she yeah. also blame shifted once she was being attacked that way. She started blame shifting back to Shauna, but it was kind of ironic though. Like she says, because that is what happened. And some of these are, I want to point out some of these really good comments too, because it was like, you know, Shauna rebelled Jackie's authority. I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think it's true. And then they were both Again, they were both really toxic to each other, all of these toxic relationships. And I think that's the point is that we are all toxic to each other in one way or another. There's no not being. I don't really think anyone is more at blame than another person. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you know, accepting these things. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it, it, it's just really... <laughs> It's really a tragic. All the saints are so tragic, aren't they? So then they, so then basically Jackie sort of drifts off and we see her having this, um, 
where Shauna comes out and, you know, there's this moment where Shauna's looking out the window at Jackie and Ty is like, you should just go out and talk to her. And Shauna says no. And then she just gets into bed. And then we see Jackie and she's out at the fire and she sees Shauna coming out to her, apologizing, you know, come inside. It's cold out here. Um, just come back inside. And they bring her in and they give her, um, a, uh, a cup of hot chocolate. She's like, where did this come from? And Sean is like, does it even matter? And they're having this sort of beautiful moment where they're all like, we love you, Jackie. And, you know, it's, and then once we realize, you know, kind of what's happening in the moment, um, that it's actually like her moment of death, it's really eerie because, her final moments, her final like thoughts and recollections are all these people that she obviously loves the most. And she's the closest to right in that moment and the moment of her death, all of them telling her they love her and Shauna apologizing and telling her she loves her. And that's how she like envisions Shauna in her mind is like with love, with kindness, with, you know, all of these things. And, and whether Shauna, realizes that or not she feels that immense guilt for the rest of her life because of it and so it's an interesting situation it's definitely yeah. interesting it's definitely haunting um i think also like that guilt is part of why she had that narcissistic wound is why like it wasn't is just putting jackie up on that pedestal it was the guilt like that's why she didn't tell her the truth mm -hmm. the shame the fear you know, the fear of losing Jackie really is why. And then she oh. ends up caught losing Jackie. I and know. Jackie lost her voice, so she lost her life. And that's what I'm saying. The words are what make the words our life. Word, The word is life. <laughs> it's such a funny situation because these two have literally survived a plane crash. They survived a plane crash. That's like the most fearful thing that many of us can conjure up in our minds. And yet Shauna still cannot work up the, the guts to tell Jackie the, the truth about. And it's like, what does it even matter? Like even Jackie realizes that at a certain point, she's like, what does it matter? My whole relationship with Jeff, it doesn't matter. What does it matter? I'm literally, I survived a plane crash. I'm out here mm -hmm. barely surviving. And I don't care about my boyfriend back home. Like the thing I care about the most is like, right there with her and she's betraying her. And so, you know, they've stared death in the face and yet Shauna is still too afraid to offend Jackie by telling yeah. her the truth. It's such a weird situation. And the whole, I, it doesn't matter how we get fed. Does that not trigger up into season two? Mm -hmm. Oh, how did they, how did you get oh, this chocolate? How did you get this substance? It doesn't matter, but it does matter. Also, how you get it. That scene um, where Jackie's drinking the hot chocolate was very reminiscent of um, in season two when Shauna has the baby and um, she a baby. the drink from mm -hmm. Natalie. Um, yeah. The and and she, I can't. I she doesn't drink from it. I don't think there's like some underworld symbolism with it in that with like the baby and the baby dying and all of that. Yeah. So, she doesn't like drink drinking of the, yeah. So, because in the, under, like in the Persephone and Hades myth is if, you know, what, if you eat the, the seeds of the pomegranate, which Persephone does, which um, binds her to the underworld for a period of the year, which is the winter period, which is why things don't grow and, and are, it's cold and, and dead. So was it, was it not that brings that, I think she, or was Lottie tries to feed her at first? Or was it just Lottie with the baby? Lottie tries I feel like to feed the baby, but Nat brings her the mug okay. of, like, whatever. Drink. Yeah, because I feel like Lottie is representative of part. She's ruled by the underworld. I feel like she does get possessed by Hades or or the, the underworld. She becomes the queen of the underworld in a sense. Oh, close up. But um, this whole, like, feeding her. Because you see her feeding the drinks feeding people into the dark and keep and trying to keep them in her realms, trying to keep the girls, let the girls kill themselves based on the drink in, in season two. Yeah. I feel like Lottie is a servant now of the underworld. 
by feeding well, she's people. She's willing to play the game. That's for sure. Like, yeah, who's who's Russian and roulette then, with the you know phenobarbital yeah. poison drink? And like all and, the the alcohol's there, and then she's not drinking, and that's not drinking in the future, and then then she she actually does, and then ends up dying. Which like, is so funny, also because like you know. Van is the one who's said to be like the trickster. That's like kind of her association, right? Because the card mm -hmm. she draws and um, because she draws like the Jack of Spades or clubs, something like that. Anyways, she's the trickster I've associated her with. Like she's kind of got that Hermes energy um, and just trickster vibes. And so, but, um, but it's funny that like Lottie is the one who's so willing to like play these games and that kind well, of thing. She's like, I'm telling you, like, I think that she's ruled by the underworld. And then the mystic realm, here's the thing about mystics. Here's the thing about the spirit realm. A spade's a spade in the spirit realm. It is what it is. You call it. The truth is the truth. It's not another name. It's not a trick. Another name. A spade is a spade. Mm -hmm. You know, and the worldly realm will tell you it's different. Yeah. So that I think that there's something to be said about that. But like Hermes, the whole analogy with that, I can see, too. But at the end of the day, Hermes in the spirit realm has like one purpose. You know, it's not he's not really a trickster. He's a messenger. He has many purposes. But he tricks people purposes. in. I, I'm a Hermes lover, you know, but he tricks people in the worldly realm more than the spiritual, realm. not in the underworld. He'll trick people in the, in the other realms, but it's well, in the world. Yeah. Tricks. It's but in the he's world. He's delivering realms. souls to the underworld. He's a psychopath. Yeah. So yeah, but Which yeah, we talked a lot about that too in season two. Was all the psychopomp? I think all the I girls have actions to be. Well, and Van, she's the one who's essentially had all these near-death experiences so she has like she's touched the underworld she's come back mm -hmm. she's done it again come back she's constantly like inter interwoven with coming back and forth from the deathly realms so it, there's yeah. something there to her um yeah yeah and but, we and we have talked about that too and the whole psychopomp thing um like when you reach these realms when you're able to tap the spirit it i think there's a lot be behind it Oh, yeah, we got it together. Yeah. That's kind of, so that's my, I mean, I kind of think so, but I'm not I, I fully, so I, you know, it's difficult to say for sure. I mean, we can't, there's no like pinpointing, but he says, so he says, um, we've been waiting for you or something like that. We're like, hello, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, this is dead cabin guy, we presume. Um, and he's been waiting for Lottie and we have, or for Jackie. And we have that moment also right before we see him, um, Jackie sees Laura Lee and that's how she sort of, she's like, what, you know, she kind of has that moment of like, what are, what am I seeing right so, now? And it's Laura Lee who's there. Like, it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. And, you know, sort of like guiding her into the death realms. And then, yeah, dead cab, dead cabin guys there. He's welcoming her they've been waiting for her and so we have to kind of wonder is he hades is he you know the one who's taking her into the underworld and jackie has all this persephone symbolism with her you know her green and pink and and being this beautiful maiden and all of that and you know giving her virgin blood to the symbol where the dead cabin guy was or maybe he's just uh calling her to the closet <laughs> maybe he's like let me get some of that 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 i don't know anyways <laughs> yeah yeah it goes without saying y'all if you got the spirit of you know what we're talking about you know if yeah you know, you know. anyways but, um, we don't want to get demonetized like, immediately so. but yeah um, speaking of demon Mm -hmm. He reminds me a lot of Beelzebub here. Like, look how dirty he looks. How shitty. Like, he's throwing a gut. Like, he looks like crap. Yeah, which is Lies. That's not how I envision well, Hades at all. Me like, neither. No, me neither. He's a well put together man, you know, and a very handsome and clean yeah. cut. And, you know, he's managing things in his realm. So, <laughs> and also, like, I do want to point out, I pointed out last time too, Hades, like, if you want to take off on the, um, you know, angel, devil type thing or demons and, and whatever. Hades is mentioned in the Bible several times. Mm -hmm. And it's mentioned as a place where the spirits go while they're waiting judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a real thing that is actually given credit and, and, and many different forms, not just, you know, I'm talking about in the Christian uh, 
you know, religious realms mm-hmm. of, of that aspect, not just even Greek mythology. So yeah. it's um, <laughs> beautiful friends coming into the closet with me. Uh, Hades yeah, has he, an off day. Beelzebub's his his uh, second one, and this is Hades' off day. Demons trying to overthrow Hades. Now that does happen. So it could have happen. He's like, this is my no wash day, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is Hades interesting. Is so, um, well, Wild well, Marjoram. Me... Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, Wild Marjoram says, um, is Cabin Daddy slash the Hunter related to not the Hunter or Huntress? Um, he is credited as the Hunter in the credits. And that's where it gets a little muddled where we're like, hmm, what are you, you know, meant to represent? Is, Predators. is he the same as Dead Cabin Guy? Like, is this the same person or spirit? Um, because Dead Cabin Guy, like, his clothes were all so dirty that, you know, it's kind of difficult to him. And he had, like, a beard and long hair going on. And so it's kind of hard to know if that is him um, or if this is a completely different spirit. Um, and well, let's say that could be all of them related to the, if, if he's really, because I think that's what gives Natalie her edge, you know, that's what gives her the, um, the, privilege or or you know whatever of being the 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 favorite of the wilderness because she is you know she's exchanging with the wilderness it's taking a life to give life you know there's some there's a a a cyclical nature to their relationship and so physical though let's say because the spiritual nature like you said earlier was lottie and yeah exactly there's She's missing that and she finds on season two, but like there's this whole dynamic again, is it spiritual or is it physical? Mm -hmm. And she does take on the physical, but really the true predators are the others and they're indirectly being predators. They don't even know it. Well, and also this like idea, you know, of like the reincarnation cycle, life, death, and rebirth, a descent into the underworld, you know, coming out of it and being like wiser for it or having this sort of like um, new knowledge or, 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 and and that's interwoven into like the Eleusinian mysteries as well, because Mm -hmm. by going through the mysteries, by being an initiate, you also are given you know you're basically finding like um you're having realizations about the the descent into death the descent into the underworld the end of life and the reincarnation cycle and i think that's like probably was a um a reason for many people like participating in this because there is like a relationship that's developed through that with death and with your after with the afterlife and so if you've been initiated you instantly sort of gain um favor favoritism in the afterlife or you've gained like accolades so you're not necessarily starting out at at like level one and like because there are sort of levels to the underworld there are certain areas where um you know the the heroes live there are areas where the more beloved people that are you know that are good people and probably the people that have you know been initiates of of the mysteries that they're sort of in this higher realm versus like other people being in like you know sisyphus like you know having to push a rock up the hill forever uh or just living in like a or or the hunter being caught in his territory or even if you're, you know, the the idea of paying the ferryman, you know, if you show up at the underworld and you don't have your coin for the ferryman to pay your way across, you're stuck there at the shore for something like a year or seven years or nine years. I don't know. You're just stuck there and you have to wait. I'm feeling that. Um, yeah. Which is sort of like being in limbo in a sense and your soul <laughs> being in limbo. So, uh, and that's why the burial process and everything is so important for, mm-hmm. um, people in the afterlife so anyways also uh, though, uh i love I, this I, hold on just oh, let me sorry. finish this really quick um I but, <laughs> but my my idea with this would be like with jackie being so naive in a sense or being so like innocent and pure and naive she by being the first to descend into the underworld she's also being the first to sort of evolve and like become a higher being maybe in her next incarnation right so that's- uh, which is Callie. 
And same, yeah, exactly. And Going back to Haunt Shauna. <laughs> kind of the same with Laura Lee also. Oh my gosh, here. wait, what a, oh, the go spirit ahead. of Jackie found the body. Say again? Jumping, spirit of Jackie found the body, like, was was it re reincarnated through Callie, but it was like the first body, you know, you it really lives through Shauna. Yeah. Like it really lives through Shauna in the future too. But I love that like the, the, the whole idea. I love this comment too, the hunter and the body. I mean the, the mind, body, soul, mm -hmm. your conscious, subconscious, inner conscience, they're all different. The Holy Spirit Jesus mm -hmm. God, they're all different entities of one. Mm -hmm. They're different. They're not just the same. They have unique rooms, even though the, all their doors flow open. Mm -hmm. Once you want, have one to another to another, when you enter the house, you can enter, you enter room by room by room. Mm -hmm. But, or when you enter hell, you go by, you go by, you know, room by, or what is it? The tears by tier like by tier. Yeah, the levels. Yes, there are levels to everything. Mm -hmm. And this this is they're caught in this level and i think this is a great comment this this made my gears spin a little bit um and the whole it factor so narcissists will literally take your name away they don't even use your name half the times or they'll, they'll call you other stuff like jackie becomes jacks you know or like they give you nicknames pet names to give you to make you more items like you become a a physical object you know, you might as well be a doll on the shelf, whatever. But also demons cannot say your name. And they also have, um, we've been waiting for you. Demons speak in plurals because there's always one or more. In fact, they usually come in sets of three or seven. Our leagues, legions, mm -hmm. legions beyond. Because with every one, there's always three. So this whole concept of the threes that we get throughout this, whether it be holy or, or non-holy or whatever you want to call it, it happens and things do come in threes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. That's it. Mm -hmm. But the hunter, you know, again, it's giving a, a label to things that are not necessarily just that. It's what you can see all you want. You can see a million things, but there's always more that you don't see. And that's the spirit realm. And it takes not sun and moon, not Lottie. And it takes not the spirit only like Lottie, who's blinded by just the spirit, you know, blinded that this is the wilderness that controls it all. Not kind of caught in physical realms, but starting to realize in the future that she's, it's, it's about the spirit and it's about healing and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But also like there are people who go to healing things and they get caught in that. You can become a spiritual narcissist through these healing things and think you know it all and you you reject the other things think you think you know mm -hmm. it's it's everything everything is everything by lauren hill <laughs> what so, is meant to be will be yeah um so as far as like who the hunter or who dead cabin guy is is he hades i mean it's a good question there are other like factors to take into consideration too, like Hades, <coughs> excuse me, being like, is he inter like we've talked about this quite often? Um, is he connected? Is Dead Cabin Guy connected to um, the man with no eyes, or are these two completely separate like entities or energies? Are they uh, all demons combined? <laughs> or one. is is dead cabin guy if he is hades or if he's you know legion or if he is some sort of authoritative figure is he calling dead cabin guy in or vice versa you know did did taisa bring dead cabin guy to the wilderness and now these two like sort of spirits have to contend with each other or contend with the environment i don't even know i mean there's so much still to like kind of contemplate the fact that we were shown dead cabin guy just seems so significant Especially like, and the fact that we're shown the man with no eyes seems very significant. We didn't see him again. You know, he wasn't shown in um, season two, but there's the, you know, the, the, da the cabin daddy special that is like, <laughs> um, yeah. that is rumored to be, hold on, let me get to it. So, uh, 
Well, I love the fact that it's Hades and he takes Jackie as the wife. And and I love the fact also the man with no eyes is different be, and that he comes with ties. I think they're all ties to the spiritual realm or to these past stories. Uh-huh. This is so cute. Yeah, so this is actually Melanie Linsky's husband, and this is, you know, there's the rumored Cabin Daddy special that has already been filmed, and they are planning to release it between seasons two and three. We know season three is about to start filming um, in early May, and will probably be released early in two, in 2025. Um, so, with all of that in mind. <laughs> Do you guys think in the chat and also Mandy, do you guys think like, do you think we'll get the cabin daddy special sometime in 2024 just to keep the ball rolling and keep the hype going and the hive buzzing? Mm-hmm. I love that you said my name. Thank you. Because I know you're not a demon now, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I, you know what? My theme this year is gold galore in 2024. It's about me (laughs) healing my trauma wounds with my mother, which obviously are still coming out (laughs) if you've been watching, which I don't mind (laughs) to share because I'm changing the world with my gold because now these things have become my gold this year. Last year was a crazy year for me, but now gold galore 2024, a galore meaning abundance, abundance in yellow jackets seems perfect. Why not? I would love if they do that. I think it's going to be great. And I think, yeah, I can only hope. Let's get the goal. Give us our trophies. Give us some trophy. Come on, please. Yeah. I mean, so they're saying early 2025 is when season three is going to come out. So fingers crossed. Like I'm hoping because I think season two came, started at, wasn't it like the end of February or the end of March? I think it was the end of March because I was covering – servant this is how I, I live my life what show was I covering um, <laughs> but um so I'm hoping like around the same time frame in 2025 is probably like March ish is my you know best guess um, yeah, it would make sense after the girls got out of winter and we're going in the spring mm-hmm. and to bring in like that new like um yeah that cycle right at the perfect time I would love that um I love this comment because um, I think he would after his wife and his baby died. Well, how's he going to get them afterwards, though? Well, you know. uh, I think a dad. Well, it will all be, how did they get out of the wilderness? We don't know. Yeah. (laughs) the answer. That's the point. The answers are never actually truly there. And if they are there, they might just be your answer, but they might not be the answer to someone else. The way you heal is not the same way another person can heal. You know, well, like, and also, like, who's to say there's exactly. been only one cabin guy? You know, maybe there's been multiple. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is some sort of, like, hermitage. Like, you know, I don't even Mercury. know. Is it Mercury? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, he could be a psychopomp. That's where he's getting these magazines. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It's interesting to contemplate. Um, and also, you know, Jason Ritter, he has a mustache in those photos, whereas mm-hmm. Dead Cabin Guy doesn't have a mustache. We're also wearing a different flannel, which was the, the cabin guy the original out of flannel wasn't in. Yeah, dead cabin guy. Yeah, I, so that was the beginning of cabin. <laughs> because, you know, does your hair, doesn't your hair keep growing in your fingernails after you die? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe who knows how long he was dead? <laughs> you know, he could have died that way. <laughs> Very. Yeah. Maybe this. And, is, and then is, we see that shaving and Taisa cutting your hair and Coach Ben cutting their hair. Mm-hmm. It's a huge thing in this show. So, yeah, well, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it would be nice if they gave it to us as like a Christmas special where it starts the winter or like the end of winter, like in November. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm but hoping you know what's coming. Mm-hmm. I I've think decided. they did that before with like the trailer, that whole video with the candle and all of that. If, yeah. if any of you guys <laughs> that were part of it. Yeah. yeah Aaron, 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 Queen. Aye, aye. Yep. You know what is coming though? I've decided my voice is coming back and Aaron has been suggesting it. I'm not sure. I have a bunch of parodies in play, but I wanted to do it last year. The Yellow Jackets parody Christmas special is coming. <laughs> I've done it for a Game of Thrones. We mm-hmm. called it the Lit Bringers Litmus special, Litmus. 
So uh, we're going to – I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I hope you do. Do you hear what I hear? It's going to be Lottie's song. (laughs) (laughs) Said the wilderness (laughs) to the horned deer. Do you hear what we hear? (laughs) (laughs) A wind, a wind blowing from the trees. The Too bad Tysa doesn't see. Yeah. <laughs> Marie, do you hear those drip strings or something? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just talking crap right now. But honey, please, so, mom's in the sun. Go ask Daddy. Um, I don't know. Go ask Daddy. Thank you. So I just figure I'll pull these photos. <sighs> So to wrap it all up, yes, they wake up in the morning. It has snowed. And Shauna, of course, is immediately like, oh, crap. And she runs outside. And, yep, in the true detective fashion, we have a corpsicle. <laughs> um, so poor Jackie, you know, falling what it, falling asleep feels like dying. Isn't that what Thaisa said? Yeah. Yep. And also, and- like, the narcissist statue the like looking back jackie couldn't get she kept looking back to the past last episode She's like remember what we could have done or should have done or would have done well and it's like wanna... the, what what do you say like there's like the fight or f- flight or freeze, freeze. Or fawn. Fawn. and that's how that was jackie's reaction she froze and she never unfroze well no, she didn't. Well, she, until she was on the pyre. Okay. Or, but also season one, because we talked about this, when Shauna takes the meat out, Jackie's frozen. That's symbolic of Jackie. Mm-hmm. And that unfreeze the thought. But then she goes and kills a rabbit, which is also a symbolism of Jackie because she wants raw meat. In mm-hmm. this episode, she's got the blood. She wants the taste of raw meat. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, in, C- in episode one, it's very, very important to realize that in the future – she, the it's unthawing. Mm-hmm. This trauma wound is un this it's not frozen. It's it's ready to come out. Yep. And Bye, course- S Roses. Yeah, thank you for coming. Oh, thanks for being here, S Roses. You're awesome. Yeah, we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we have this tragic moment. This actually like got me choked up this morning. I've been feeling very sensitive. And see about- Taisa trying to deny it. That's it didn't choke me up. It got me mad. I wanted to like punch Ty in the face, honestly. Well, you know what's funny <laughs> is that I caught, and now that you say about Taisa, I noticed that many of the girls in this scene are dressed wearing the stripes. They're all wearing the stripes. So it's like it's like I've talked about how they they do the editing with the um with the sort of glitching, the scenes glitching out and that kind of thing. There's a lot of like crossover and like the lines and that kind of thing. I think their clothes are really like representative of that because we've had so many scenes of like where Jackie's wearing a striped shirt and then Nat's wearing stripes and they're kind of blending into each other. And also one thing I caught in this scene was the pillow that Jackie was using is her, well, you can't really see, but it's her stripy pillow that she's always using. So it's almost like she laid her head down it, she went right into the, you know, the squiggly lines. And, um, Ash, but yeah, a lot of the girls out there on the porch are wearing striped shirts like that. But Thaisa is not. There's a couple that are just in solids, Thaisa being one of them. As I, I, as I lay me down the rest, I pray to Hades, my soul for release or something. <laughs> <laughs> Persephone, yeah. as I as I dream, something like There's that. Gotta be something there. You can make a rap out of that one. As I lay me down to sleep, <laughs> I'll <laughs> see you at the crossroads. Actually, yeah. I <laughs> that was, well, you can remix, remix. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's kind of um where it's at that's kind of the end of season one um lottie of course goes and does the makes the offering so again going back to the idea where um ty or excuse me van is wearing the the blue the turquoise and white stripes just like what jackie had been wearing we have um misty with the blue blanket that jackie was sleeping with and then uh Lottie with the heart, with the bear heart, and they're making this offering to the wilderness. And I really think it's actually quite symbolic of Jackie's death. 
um, and sort of making it that as an offering to the wilderness. I also think that um, it's really important to point out that after they make that offering in, in season two is when, you know, we end up seeing the wilderness giving fire to Jackie's body, feeding them, feeding them then, using her body to feed them in a sense. So is it that her giving more power and praising the wilderness? Does the wilderness give her more power in return? And then there's something to it too in season two because Nat denies the power of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And and yet she's, she's not able to hunt. She's not able to bring the substance. She's not able to get the deer or the moose. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not able to find substance because she's denying and praising the sources, the source. Let's just call it source if we want to call spirit source. But there's a difference between source and spirit because spirit is more of an act, internal action or representation of movement spirit is the wind the source is beyond our definition it's it's not even there you know we don't even know what it is can i just point out that yeah chocolate is an excellent offering to hades he really likes it and mm -hmm. for my priestess but i just love that <laughs> I pray to hades for Coco. that has that actually is like a really perfect touch that he that it's hot yeah. chocolate that she has in that moment. I kind of love that. So, and also, um, if you're having a heart attack, you're supposed to eat chocolate to help get your blood flowing. Yeah, I think dark chocolate. So there's right? something about it connect chocolate in the heart. Mm. Interesting. Misty's yeah, chocolate. Some... Misty's chocolates. The way to a man's yeah. heart is through my is through food. Mm-hmm. Good point. Mm. Hmm. Well. That kind of wraps it up for season one. I'm like kind of sad that we're at the end of it. I'm hoping that we do get a Cabin Daddy special sooner than later because then we'll have some, we're definitely going to be here to chat about it, you know, whenever that does come out. And of course, like any other exciting stuff that comes out about the Yellow Jackets between now and season three. And we're going to find some other things to, um, to do for live streams. So if you guys have any requests, um, if you're here in the chat still, uh, by the way, if you're here in the chat still, thank you for sticking around. It's been, you know, um, almost three and a half hours, but I am happy that you guys stuck with us. <laughs> I was kind of planning on doing a longer one today anyways, just because it's our last our season one finale. So, um, but yeah, if let us know in the chat if there's any streams or ideas that you guys want to see. Um, I, yes, the book club idea. Okay. That's Let's one. We can do a live. We'll work on, we'll work on a, a book club live stream. We'll make it happen and we'll release a, a yeah. list maybe beforehand and let you guys know like what to study up on. We might do. So uh, the plan was to make a couple book club shorts, one per each one. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll do that and then we have a short and then release and do a live stream. Yeah. Fun. Maybe. We'll see what we can figure out. I don't yeah. know. We'll make it flow. We'll but, try not yeah. to make some Mandy monologues. I apologize. I just get so passionate. And I'm telling you, this show really just, it, it's all about the trauma and healing and wounds. And like, it's helped me and all my and our mine and Aaron's together, we, you know, we do the research, we read the the books, we read the things, and we do not always, but like we learn about it, learning more about how we deal. I didn't even know like fawn and freeze was a part. I always heard fight or flight, you know. We're learning about psychology, we're learning about demons, we're learning about more about the Bible for me. We're learning more about Greek mythology. We're learning more as we go, and we love you being here. And I think that to share our our authentic experiences also help. Um, and hopefully, you know, you appreciate our authentic voices too. There is no book club club. <laughs> <laughs> there is no no book book club club. <laughs> it's like the devil. She made you think there was a book like you know what I mean? It makes you think that it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, that could be fun. I think we could, you know, especially like the bigger ones. I, I am actually um, excited to read <laughs> Paradise Lost, believe it or not. I'm, I am excited to get on that undertaking and see like what I can learn. Because I definitely think that there are some um, 
let's start with it. Uncut gems in there. Yeah. Like something I really think it's all tying into Shauna's characterization quite a lot because a lot of that story from what I understand is about there's um, a descent into hell and a ascent out of hell and it's Satan, you know, that this is, or Lucifer that it's happening to. Um, And then that's in like the first part of the book. And then the second part is basically like a a family like a couple i think and they're they're sort of i don't know they're they're like yeah. their conventional traditional life versus like this i i don't even know i yeah. don't listen to me but no, it makes well, sense well, You're, it makes perfect sense because lucifer you know you want to do a biblical terms and it's called hades a lot of times too is referred to but also like lucifer was cast out with a legion of demons a bunch of the demons mm-hmm. or earthly angels who have like turned their hearts against it it, it all makes perfect sense mm-hmm. i don't want to give too much away but i think we should start with paradise lost because yeah. it's where episode one starts so why not yeah, exactly. So if you yeah. guys here, if you're still watching in the chat, that's our first that's our first official book on book club list is Paradise Lost. I in about a month. I, and I'm pretty sure it's like a very, you know, it's a large undertaking. But also if you want something a little simpler, read the Megas. Um, it's on YouTube. There's a there's an audiobook of the Megas on YouTube that's narrated by Charles Dance. Tywin Lannister. So I definitely recommend it only. It's like a few hours of a listen. Um, and it'll give you some interesting ideas and and takeaways from it, especially when it comes to Coach and to Misty in particular. And maybe even to Walter, because that's where we had a lot of ideas of connecting. It was with Walter as well. Oh, I'm so, so excited about it. I can't, oh, so much yeah. passion with this show. So much passion and learning. So much passion to read these things, right? Mm-hmm. Let's do mm-hmm. it. All right, you guys. Well, we're going to get going. My son's going to be home from school in just a couple minutes, so I got to get off here so I can go out to the bus and get him. But um, all right. thank you all so much for joining us for season one of Yellow Jackets. And, of course, if you want to watch our season two coverage, it's here on my channel. Um, and, of course, a bunch of other things. And I did also last week I made a, a video about Alice Rivers, which is really long. It's 48 minutes long, mm-hmm. but it's very enjoyable. So if you are looking for something to do, then put it on and watch. I'm not getting, you know, it's not getting a ton of views, but I was kind of anticipating that one's going to be a, a grower, not a show. It's, it's too long for <laughs> most people. I know that's the thing is most people don't give it a lot of attention or, and I get it, you know, time is value, but it's like, there's valuable gems there. So yeah, I like a nice long <laughs> video that really like brings you into the story. And that's what I try to do with this one. It's more of like an artistic endeavor, like where you we're bringing, there's poetry, there are themes, there are colors, there are, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a movie on, in and of itself. So it's I like want one of our all... live. Oh, sorry. What's that? It's like one of our live streams. <laughs> exactly. And then better. some, you know, but no, it's it... actually like planned and you you did a really good job. Thank you. It I was a know. it was a patron request for my Patreon. So, and if you guys are interested in helping support the channel, check out my Patreon. The link is below and also there on the screen. So, if you guys and we do a lot of fun exclusive stuff on there. They got early access, really early access to some of my video, the Alice River one. Um so, yeah, and a lot of other stuff. Um, so anyways, thank you all. I love my patrons and I love my channel members. If you want to become a channel member, I have, um, on my patron, there are low level tiers, like a dollar 99 to start. And then my, um, channel memberships here are, uh, like two bucks. So anyways, if you want to help support the channel, I would love you and appreciate you. Um, but I also know that times are tough and I, I, I understand if it's not in the budge, trust and believe. So <laughs> we, and we still appreciate you anyway. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> exactly. And one final thing that I do want to say, and you know, whether you all agree with me or not is not really not my top priority, but I do want to <laughs> just point out, and I it has to be pointed out, especially because yesterday was the Super Bowl and some really atrocious things happened in Gaza. I didn't even watch. Um, that were 
inhumane. So the th- the the atrocities that are happening in Gaza, um, we are pro. I am pro Palestinian here on my channel, and if you don't agree with that, that's fine. Maybe we have a difference in opinions. I'd gladly debate it with you. Or um, if you're if it's not your bag, then feel free to unsubscribe. But uh, I support Palestine here and the atrocities that are happening there are unbearable. It has to stop. And I, you know, am calling upon the Biden administration to end the things that are happening, the horrible things that we're made to witness and the horrible things that we are made to fund as Americans here. I don't accept it. I don't support it. I will not be voting for Joe Biden. I nope. do not support the Never. Biden administration. They are evil. They're doing evil things all over the world. They are destroying American democracy and all of it is wrong. And whether or not you agree with that or not, that's why I saved it until the end of episode 10. I agree. I and, agree a hundred percent with you. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I was raised better than this. I studied the Holocaust and human rights. I'm very well informed on the Holocaust, which is why I will happily debate anyone that wants to bring it up. So um, we can happily have that conversation. But all I am saying that human life, all human life is valuable. The things they're doing to children. And while the Super Bowl was playing, Israel timed it out and started bombarding Rafa after they aired this sympathetic ad in the Super Bowl commercials. Okay. They timed it out and they are attacking the last stronghold that the Palestinians have to go to for safety that they were told is safe by the Israelis. It's, uh, and then they started bombing them all indiscriminately. There are children dying. There are mothers dying. There are little girls being trapped in cars with their families where everyone around them is dead and they're calling for help and no one can come to help them because they're being shot at. And then that little girl died. And I have to sit there and see her mother. It's terrible. It's really messed up. And you know what? I can't unsee it. I have the luxury of turning it off on my phone, but these people don't have the luxury of escaping it. And that is wrong. And so I'm using my platform here that I am doing the best that I can to share this information and share love and let the people of Palestine know that we care. And we We do. We care. We don't accept and we don't condone anything that's happening. And if I could do anything, if I could bring any of them here and just like yes. give them love, I would. And I can't, unfortunately, I don't have the money or the power or the influence to do so. So all I can use is my voice to say it has to stop. It has to stop. We I do not her. accept this. We as Americans do not accept this. Joe Biden has to stop. He needs to be taken out of office. He's an evil, evil person. The whole administration is evil and it is not conducive to the desires of the American people. All right. That's all I have to say. No. Otherwise, I'm too emotional. And I'm just it's like, Mandy, I've been crying. I literally have been crying all night long about, I saw that video of Hen's mother. I can't take that shit. I can't fucking take that shit. I don't like it. It breaks my heart. Every bit of this is wrong. Every bit of it is wrong. It is 100%. These things need to stop. Human life matters. Humans matter. Every life matters. Okay? Mm -hmm. I want to make every vote matter, but it doesn't because our nation is messed up. Mm -hmm. The voting system's messed up. It's all messed up all around the world. Mm-hmm. But it's time, and this like this show helps. If you read these things, if you go down these paths, and it is passionate, and you should cry, and we should be weeping for humankind. We should be weeping about these things, and it does need to be said, Aaron. And I'm so proud of you, and I'm glad to be here and support you and be on this stream with you when you said that. Thank yes. you. Yes, I've been biting my tongue for almost this entire season one podcast, and I probably, you know, I. But I, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to speak up. It's dangerous. You will be, I, shit, I could be demonetized. I could have this stream taken down. The voices supporting uh, Palestine are trying, they're trying so hard to silence us. The legacy media is trying to silence us. The legacy media is not telling the truth. You have to search out the real truth. And so I recommend watching as much as you can 
looking for these videos. Look, I mean, if you go on Twitter, you can't avoid it. And it's horrific, the things you have to see. So please do everything you can to support Palestine. And that's, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know my stance on the situation. And, um, and exactly. it's right. Silence, Silence equals, equals death. death. Narcissistic abuse. Kind of man We're just it up, but I appreciate you being here with the right, right message. Earlier, yeah, earlier I talked about even words equal death. When you say the wrong thing, when you say mean things, you know, I started crying, sharing experiences, but literally silence does silence equals death and, mm -hmm. and, and raping and women and dying and abuse all of our lives and the abuse of narcissists and the abuse of, of political agendas and the mm -hmm. abuse period across the world. And this is, this show is literally portraying these undertones mm -hmm. the entire time. Maybe we need to do a little Thaisa witchcrafting and sacrifice our dogs to save the people. Well, you, that's on you. I don't know. No, don't I'm with the Holy me. Spirit don't, over don't, here. Don't do that. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm with the Holy sorry. Spirit over here. So it's not quite my realm. But you know what? You do you. I'm going to do me. And we're going to bring the gold. We, we from... Just, you know, do do follow your intuition. That's how I, I'm an intuitive. <laughs> uh, intuitive politics is how I, you know, live my I, life. 333, by the way, <laughs> live 333 on the Holy yep. Spirit. So there we go. All right. Go. Well, we're going to end it on 333. I love all of you guys, and we <laughs> will be back soon. And um, take care of each other and love each other and love your fucking selves, as Drama Queen would say. Jackie <laughs> out. Jackie out. <laughs>